Okay, hello everybody. We are in the semifinals of the Balanced Annihilation Crown Cup 3 tournament. And this is Wing Flyer. I will be casting the tournament for everybody joining me. Everybody that is watching, uh, if anyone is just coming in, hello. We have a game between Goopy and Cartouche. I missed the very start of this one, but we are still early on into this game, and uh, it is already very entertaining. We've got both players just kind of flexing on each other here. Goopy with a whole group. Jeffy's here. Just moving around the map. A uh, bit unusual strategy. This early on, this many Jeffies. This is like a dozen or so Jeffies. And uh, he's just going to be moving around the map with these bad boys. Uh, I guess trying to harass Cartouche. Now Cartouche has uh, a lot of fleas and a straight up fight. Uh, I believe Jeffies are going to be better than fleas. And uh, this is a lot of Jeffies, but uh, as you can see, all it takes is one to explode. One Jeffy to explode to uh, kind of cause a chain reaction there. That is why Mass Jeffies is a uh, wouldn't be considered an orthodox strat exactly. Uh, wouldn't uh, not something you're used to seeing this many Jeffies. Typically, uh, you might see flashes or, or something instead. But uh, no, Goopy opting for the Mass Jeffy, and uh, he has transitioned into flashes here. So, uh, yeah, both of these players, very good. Guys, we are in the semifinals. After this game, I will show you the brackets, but uh, it has been a very good tournament so far. And uh, both of these players could absolutely win it. Uh, now, Cartouche, our reigning champion, he has won the past two Crown Cup tournaments. I also casted the, uh, the, uh, the last uh, Crown Cup, so... A lot of skill here. This is the best of the best, guys. And uh, again, Orange Cartouche, our reigning champion. Absolutely dominant performance. I'll just give you an overview here of the entire map. You want to see what's going on? And uh, Goopy continuing to be the aggressor here. Let's, uh, let's back out again. As you can see, Cartouche on the defensive. He is just trying to uh, hold on to his metal extractors and his base. But uh, Goopy relentless with the harassment here with all these Jeffies. And uh, now interestingly, Cartouche's commander way up here. So Cartouche is not using his commander to defend his base. He is instead uh, building a bit of an expansion up here in the top uh, middle of the map, kind of the north here. And uh, when you look at the metal graph, or the metal stats, uh, it does look as though Goopy uh, has more. It does look, if you look at the top right, it does look like Goopy is doing better. But... Uh, we are still early on in the game, and uh, the thing is, Cartouche being very aggressive here with his commander, he's got to be careful. Uh, the truth is that uh, he could certainly get caught out here and swarmed, but uh, it's not clear that Goopy knows that his commander is this close to his base. I mean, look, he has walked all the way up the map here. Throughout this game, and he has slowly made his way almost to uh, to Goopy's starting base. So that is pretty entertaining. And Goopy here now reacting with a small group of Stumpies, and uh, yeah, Cartouche with that D gun. So uh, this isn't enough to kill the commander. And Cartouche here with a devastating counterattack, perhaps of uh, Peewee's. 
so now Goopy does know that his commander is there. He is practically on Goopy's doorstep. And uh, he's got to be careful. Both players have to be careful here. Because Goopy's commander is also pretty far out here. But uh, relatively well defended. Goopy's still ahead on metal. But if you just look at the map. Let's get rid of these uh, markers. If you just look at the map here, you can see Cartouche has great control. He's essentially got a line of buildings down the middle. He's got uh, his commander in the front. And he's got a, uh, a squad of Peewees here. Very impressive. Again, Cartouche, very scary. Some consider him to be the best BA player all time and uh, certainly his performances at the last few tournaments have been stellar he has won both crown cup one and two this is crown cup three that we are currently casting so uh yeah he's a uh, he's someone that you definitely want to watch and uh terrifying to play against for sure here we have a whole group of peewees moving in And uh, this is perhaps bad for Goopy. He doesn't have enough defense here. Cartouche deciding not to uh, push in and go for the kill. Instead, content to have a light contain. Maybe just kill everything as it rolls off the production line for Goopy. But yeah, as you can see, uh, Goopy in a very tenuous spot here. Oh my god, Cartouche isn't watching. Oh my god, what is he doing? Okay, wow. I just looked away for a second, or I, I pulled the map out, and uh, Cartouche, with a huge mistake there, he pulled all of his peewees back behind his defensive line, and allowed the Stumpies to just come in and swarm his commander and kill him. That was a huge mistake by Cartouche that wasn't expected at all. There was no reason he, he shouldn't have used his Peewees there to uh, screen for his commander. But uh, I think maybe he wasn't paying attention. Maybe he was on some different part of the map. But ultimately, Cartouche in a, in a commanding position there and just throws it away. Absolutely insane uh, outcome of that fight. Uh, but entertaining nonetheless, and uh, Goopy with a, a surprising first game. He he won. It's a best of three. He won the first game, and Cartouche had it in his grasp. And then just that small micro mistake uh, was enough to allow Goopy to uh, surround his commander and and win. So, uh, congrats, man! Cong now, guys, if you are just tuning in, we are in the Crown Cup Three Tournaments semifinals. This is Cartouche versus Goopy. Again, Cartouche the favorite to win the entire tournament. But uh, Goopy in an incredible upset in the first game of this best of three. Killed Cartouche when Cartouche was really just looking away for a second. It's, it really felt like he had his attention elsewhere. And uh, all it took was about... 5-10 seconds of Miss Micro, and Goopy surrounded him with Stumpies and killed him almost instantly. And uh, Cartouche, with an uncharacteristic mistake there, um, really shouldn't have lost that game. He, he certainly had it in his grasp. Felt felt as though he had the, the, uh, the game in his clutches and let it go. Goopy, probably realizing he was in dire straits, opted for a kind of desperate all-in play, and it did work. He was successful. So, uh, guys, if you're in the chat, uh, let me know how do I sound. Am, is the sound good? Am I am I too loud? Uh, let me know how everything is looking. 
I want to make sure that uh, the stream quality is decent and everything. I want to make sure you have the best viewing experience possible. Okay. Thank you very much. So anyway, uh, just looking at the, uh, the players right here. Again, we have Cartouche, the favorite to win the tournament here in the bottom left, who is down one game. He has gone core this time, vehicles first. And his opponent, Goopy, who won the first game, is going vehicles first as well. Interesting choice from both players who last time went, they, they were both ARM and they went K-Bots uh, K first. No, that's not true. Goopy did go vehicles. He, he built all those Jeffies. But either way, um, both starting vehicles first and uh, core vehicles first. Very interesting choice. So we will see what the players decide to do here. Uh, last game, Goopy was the aggressor at the start with the Jeffy spam. Absolutely building so many Jeffies. It was uh, pretty entertaining to watch. And, and doing that this game as well, it seems. He's got a lot of them already, just rolling them off the production line. You know, it never stops. My god, he likes to build a lot of them. And uh, Cartouche with Instigators, most likely doing this to counter. Instigators, a, a nice, uh, nice unit against the Jeffies. A very, uh, very astute pick by Cartouche to shut this harassment down. Much better, perhaps, than Fleas are at, uh, at dealing with Jeffies. So, uh, Cartouche adapting, it seems, to, uh, Goopy's Jeffy spam. Again, he has a lot of them. It's a small army of, uh, Jeffies here. And uh, that's that's pretty entertaining, guys, uh, once again. But Cartouche has this time, like I said, he is doing a good job of uh, defending. He's got, he's got an LLT here in the north. He's got uh, LLT here in this, this little expo. And uh, we're just going to zoom out so you can kind of see the whole map and get a glimpse of what's going on. At this point, both players pretty even on eco, um, and uh, also map control. It's it's almost they're mirroring each other, as you can see. Uh, both the commanders at about the same position on the map, uh, symmetrically. So, uh, yeah, a pretty close game right now. No, no player has a huge advantage over the other yet. But uh, here we go. Goopy with this squad of Jeffies here in the north. And Cartouche with a single instigator. Here he had an instigator try to do something. He's sending little instigators uh, around the map for raiding. And uh, we'll have to see if they can get anything done. But Goopy is defending pretty well here. He is on the ball. Goopy on the ball. And Cartouche does manage to get two instigators past here, but Goopy has this one light laser tower, and that should be more than enough to defend this. But uh, this one is undefended here. So if he wants to take that one... Okay, he, he will get this one. Nice harassment there, and then Cartouche has another duo of instigators here. But as I said, I think this one light laser tower should be enough to uh, curtail this aggression for now. And, uh, yeah, as long as he micros the, uh, the constructor correctly, that will be just fine. So overall, uh, Cartouche, with a little more metal, but uh, Goopy is now swooping in with these Jeffies and does take out two metal extractors, so very annoying. But uh, 
yeah, Cartouche also sending a construction vehicle to rebuild those. So at this point, guys, the game is pretty even. Both players almost mirroring each other in terms of their their decisions. Cartouche with a uh, a lot of instigators, and Goopy with flashes. So flashes and instigators, very similar units. They are just the equivalent of one another. And uh, it will come down to micro. Now this is interesting. Cartouche and Goopy about to meet each other on the battlefield. And uh, Goopy does walk into range of a light laser tower and decides to get back. But also sweeping in with this group of flashes. I don't know if this... Oh my god, what are you doing, Goopy? Goopy being very aggressive and uh, he <laughs> attempts to degun Cartouche. But uh, no, that won't work. Uh, Goopy there. Wow, that was an impressive ending to the game. Um, I didn't expect that. I don't know if Goopy felt as though he was uh, in a dire situation. It certainly didn't look like it. Uh, but uh, perhaps Goopy desperate enough that he walks into Cartouche's defensive line of light laser turrets and uh, instigators. And uh, wow, that was... That was crazy, guys. I, I did not expect that. Guys, if you are just joining, this is the Balanced Annihilation Crown Cup 3 tournament. I casted the last tournament as well. And uh, this is being streamed on Twitch and recorded. So I will upload it to my YouTube channel. Where I... Uh, I cast all kinds of Total Annihilation related content. I cast Balance Annihilation. I cast uh, TA Escalation, which is a mod for the original game, original Total Annihilation. I cast uh, FAF, Forged Alliance. Uh, anything TA related, man. I love it. I love all of it. So, right now, I'm excited for this tourney. I. Uh, BA has been so amazing over the years and uh, just continues to get better. Goopy with a uh, kind of a greedy start here. And uh, this one <laughs> little flea is going to be annoying. Goopy unable to stop building this structure to deal with it. And uh, if he doesn't deal with it, Cartouche going to do some... Uh, insane economic damage with this one flea that would just be pretty devastating but uh, that Jeffy does come out still Cartouche I'm sure very annoyed I mean not Cartouche Goopy very annoyed uh, with the fact that he now has to rebuild this metal extractor it will put him a little bit behind nothing too you know extraordinary it's not as though he's uh, out of the game but uh, mostly Cartouche just being very annoying and guys, we are one to one here. Both players have won a single game. Uh, and uh, again, Cartouche being very aggressive with his commander, moving him out onto the map as early as possible, making those expansions anywhere and everywhere that he can make them. And uh, his opponent, Goopy, again opting for this Jeffy harassment just like last time. So, uh, yeah, this game is starting out very similarly to games in the past. Both players did go arm and uh, Cartouche this time starts K-Bots. And Goopy starts Vehicles. Yeah, I'm zooming in on Cartouche's commander. He's got a little crown. I, I can only assume that's, that's a Cartouche-specific commander because he is the reigning champion. He has his crown. Very entertaining there. Just uh, kind of styling on his opponents. Here we go. Goopy still attempting to get some harassment done, but uh, 
no, uh, <laughs> nothing too successful at this point. But again, I love this crown. That's so funny. Cartouche has a, a crown on his commander. He gives no shits. So, uh, yeah, Cartouche, definitely the player to beat in this tournament. He is uh, almost unstoppable, but uh, he does have holes and chinks in the armor. We have seen Goopy take a game off him. Goopy could still win. I mean, uh, let's not count anyone out here. Goopy's certainly a great player. He has the ability to do it. All it takes is one micro slip up from uh, from Cartouche. Uh, the first game, uh, it felt like Cartouche was ahead, but he uh, made one tiny mistake, and that was enough to uh, give Goopy the win. The second game, Goopy, being very aggressive with his commander and uh, walking into a line of LLTs and instigators, Hopefully he uh, he doesn't do that this game. That's not it's really not what you want to do. In BA, light laser towers do I think double damage to commanders or triple. It's it's an insane amount. They uh, it is specifically designed so that commanders can't just walk into defensive lines and degun everything. Of course, at the beginning of balance annihilation or spring TA. That was the uh, that was the norm. <laughs> Commanders could just walk into enemy defensive lines of light laser towers and sentinels and guardians and just degun everything. And uh, while that was entertaining, it probably wasn't very uh, wasn't very fun for the player that built all the defense. So oh, here we go. A couple stumpies moving in here, and uh, stumpies are very good against light laser towers. They are, uh, in general, good against defensive lines. And, uh, yeah, these Stumpies should be able to clear out these light laser towers. Cartouche sending in a couple Peewees here. And uh, also has decided to tech into Rocco's. Now, that is an interesting choice. Rocco being a longer-ranged K-Bot, they can outrange light laser towers. And uh, he will put siege pressure on his opponent, Goopy, here. And, uh, yeah. Goopy breaking through this line here with a lot of stumpies. But uh, he wants to be careful with those because the truth is that uh, stumpies are good against... Uh, buildings and defenses, but in combat they can be microed, uh, they can be kited, and they are expensive as well for a T1 unit. Stumpies are one of the most expensive T1 uh, vehicles, so it is it is a kind of uh, quality over quantity. You need to make sure you use them hyper efficiently, especially because Cartouche has a lot of units, a lot of K bots here. He's uh, He's on about 10 flashes, and uh, I mean not flashes, peewees, and 5 Roncos in the back there. Here at the top left, Goopy with 3 flashes, and uh, he is going to move in. And these fleas are desperately trying to stop him from killing that light laser tower, but no. They won't be successful, and uh, Goopy with a nice raid there, but in the top, it is... Stumpies versus Rocco's, and uh, Stumpies are faster. But uh, yeah, Cartouche once again keeping his Peewees too far back. If those Peewees had been up there, they probably would have been able to engage favorably with the Stumpies, but uh, no. And uh, wow, as you can see, if I just zoom out a little bit here, uh, Cartouche and Zoopy right on each other's doorstep. Good lord, Cartouche has, what is this, eight light laser towers grouped together here. This will be a tough defensive position to break. He's also got some rectors. He is reclaiming, excuse me, resurrecting all these corpses. And uh, these Stumpies now moving through the bottom. Perhaps Goopy doesn't, doesn't uh, know quite how many 
late laser towers cartouche actually has. It is uh, a veritable fortress of light laser towers here. Good lord. And he's building more. Yeah. Uh, wow. This is a uh, this is a tough situation for Gooby guys. As I said before, Stumpies are very strong, but uh, these Peewees just kind of running past them, getting some harassment done. Goopy's backline uh, of metal extractors not uh, not super well defended here. And uh, just looking at the map, you can you can kind of see that Cartouche has a uh, extremely. Uh, favorable position just, just in terms of uh, placement. He's got the middle of the map here and I have said in the past Total Annihilation is a bit like chess. You want to hold the middle. If you can hold the middle of the map it usually puts you into a favorable favorable position. It uh, It isn't an automatic win but holding the middle of the map does allow you to uh, have better control move out to the other parts of the map. Goopy now moving in with uh, about eight Stumpies and a Genus. But uh, I don't think this is going to be enough. There's so many light laser towers here. He's got flashes moving in. And at this point, it really does feel like Goopy is in dire straits. I'm sorry, guys. i got to turn off that chat sound. <clears throat> Let's see. Chat notification. There we go. But, uh... I mean, he has a lot of Stumpies here, and as I said before, Stumpies are good against Light Laser Towers, Janus as well. Decent, but uh, Cartouche has decided to move his flashes elsewhere. And uh, will there be a confrontation here in the middle? Cartouche and Goopy meeting. Flashes are so much faster than Stumpies and more maneuverable. But uh, Janus are pretty good against Flashes as well, especially if they're clumped up. The Janus, the uh, twin rocket launcher, if the rockets hit those grouped up Flashes, they can take out multiple. They can take out a small small force of Flashes with each rocket. But uh, even though Goopy is hanging on, the truth is that Cartouche is kind of closing in on all sides. It does, just looking at the map positioning here, you can see that Cartouche is slowly expanding his tentacles, his tendrils out all over the map, taking over everything, as Cartouche does, and uh, now moving in with a small force of flashes, he's going to uh, try to uh, take out as much eco he can, as he can in the main base, but this, uh, this one hero LLT will defend five flashes, that's incredible. But, uh, guys, I don't know. It may be too little too late. Goopy now on six metal. He has almost no income left. And, uh, Cartouche with an endless wave of units. At this point, uh, Goopy's gotta know that, uh, yeah, this is a very dire situation he has found himself in. He did, he did decide to go air. But too little too late, that's something he needed to do maybe uh, five minutes ago. <laughs> um, perhaps if he had a surprise bombing run. Uh, that might have brought him back in the game. Probably not, though. And, uh, oh, okay, so Goopy has picked his commander up on an Atlas. He is trying to be funny here. And, uh, yeah, that's not going to work. <laughs> The good old com bomb that is a, a staple of TA picking your commander up in a in a T1 transport, flying them over the enemy base, and it used to be that if your commander exploded over their commander, you could get a draw, right? Like you both die instantly. But in BA, that doesn't really work anymore. So Goopy just kind of being silly, realizing the game's over. Um, Cartouche did outplay him, and uh, Cartouche, I believe, will take this series and move on. This map, again, like I said, uh, bizarre, a little bizarre. It's not It's not really a flat map like uh, Red Comet or Comet Catcher or whatever. 
This is a uh, this is a map with some terrain. Uh, advantages and disadvantages. There's some little mountains and uh, hills here. There's a little bit of water. Of course, the water is, I think, more for show. It's not something you can really uh, not something you can really use. The chat has made this uh, made a proclamation that the north side of the map is better. Now, interestingly, the map description says recommended for six to eight players. I don't know. It seems kind of small to me for six to eight players. This would be a bloodbath with that many people. But for 1v1, it is quite interesting. Uh, the wind, as PTAC has mentioned, is between 1 and 30. So mostly that is um, it's a good range. It means the average is 15. But you can get screwed, guys. Wind is random in BA. So, um... You know, maybe you want to build one or two solar collectors in the in the times that the wind does die on you, which it does die. But right now we are at a nice 27. I sound I feel like a weatherman. You know, nice 27 mile an hour winds, beautiful skies, and uh, yeah, right now the player is getting plenty of energy from that from that wind generation. Uh, sorry about that guys. I don't Don't know what happened there, but anyway, we Again, uh, this is a bigger map and it is uh, quite Different from what we were just watching red comet was smaller and flat So uh, this map is designed for multiplayer games and uh, This is a best of five guys. So this will be a much longer, more grueling series. We shall certainly see who is the better player here, I believe. PTAC is probably my favorite. I really like PTAC. He's a uh, fantastic player, very solid, and uh, he often does very unorthodox things. You know, he will um, he will use strategies that are very kind of out of the box unorthodox uh, surprise of viewers he is I, I enjoy players like that that uh, you never quite know what to expect from them yeah as uh, as Delters saying in the chat cart and PTAC are four players each that is actually true these guys are monsters both of them quite quite good players and uh, I am very excited to see what this brings. Now this map, it is big and, uh, well for 1v1 it is. And uh, Cartouche with three construction vehicles now building an LLT. He is nano stalling here. He's struggling to complete it, but he does complete it in time. And uh, his opponent doing a very similar thing, two construction vehicles moving out here, taking these expansions, and uh, also moving to the north as well. So uh, both players kind of nano-stalling here a bit, but that's to be expected at the early game, especially if they are pumping out units from the factory as they expand over the map. They just don't have the economy yet to support their ambitions. Guys, if you are just joining, this is Crown Cup 3. This is the Crown Cup 3 tournament. And um, Cartouche is the uh, the winner of the last tournament. And I think he was the winner of the first tournament as well. So Cartouche, certainly the favorite to win. And uh, has not lost a set yet, but neither has PTAC. Both these players undefeated. And uh, you, you can see here that uh, Cartouche has a crown, right? He has been crowned king, 
He is the reigning champion, and his opponent, P-Tac, without a crown, has come to dethrone him. He must defeat Cartouche. I've already asked Ares for a nerf. I've already, I've already suggested a nerf for Cartouche. But in the meantime, P-Tax is going to have to play with these overpowered uh, opponent. But I believe P-Tac can do it. If anyone can do it, it's P-Tac. Both of these players, veterans. Both of these players, certainly capable of winning it all right now. Just a small engagement with instigators here. Both players going core. And I'd be interested to know why both players decided to go core here. On this map, core vehicles. Uh, yeah, Cartouche did have a bit of better micro there. And uh, he will catch p -Tac off guard here. p has got two construction vehicles that are not being defended. There were no light laser towers. Oh no, p desperately moving instigators into position. But Cartouche microing, oh my goodness, he does take out two construction vehicles. Very successful raid there by Cartouche. You don't want to lose construction vehicles early. Losing construction vehicles early is an absolute disaster for your economy and your production. That's uh, that's unfortunate. That's going to put P-Tac behind, I think. And uh, just looking at the metal, the income stats, uh, Cartouche is up by about 13 metal per second. So already taking an early game lead over his opponent. That is quite scary for P-Tac and Cartouche moving in here with his instigators. Oh, will he get another one? So close. Yeah. Cartouche almost getting another construction vehicle. That would have been absolutely devastating. He's already lost two, and like I said, uh, P-Tac already behind on the map. Just looking at the, uh, looking at the overview here, you can see that Cartouche has taken much more surface area. And, uh, maybe the reason the players went core is for the Exploiter. The Exploiter, the core armed metal extractor. And, uh, okay, p -Tech moving in here for a counterattack. That's gonna happen. Yeah. <laughs> he will take out an Exploiter, and, uh... Oh, that's a lot. Alright, so, uh, someone has just joined me in Twitch chat, guys. Uh, I mean, uh, Discord chat. Discord. If, feel free to join me in Discord if you want. I am in the commentator channel. Who do we have here? Who, introduce yourself. Oh, hi there, it's Big Fonzie here. Sorry to interrupt. No, no, it's, it's okay. Yeah, Fonzie, I'm, well, I'm glad you're here. It's nice to have someone else, uh, with me. And, uh, Fonzie, you are watching, I'm assuming, this, this game right now. This, uh, P-Tag versus Cartouche. That's correct. And I watched the other two rounds as well, so it was very interesting. Yeah. Okay, so what do you think so far? What's your, uh, what's your take on, on the Cartouche? Well, what was your take on the last, uh, set? He won well. What a, what an ending as well. Incredible ending, because he almost got away, P-Tag. P-Tag for that. These are probably, they've been, you know, the two best players, really, yeah. uh, potentially on the in the tournament. So it's quite interesting to see him do this right now. So um, I think Cartouche seems to have the edge somehow. For some reason he seems to be slightly winning. Um, oh yeah, I mean I already already told the chat. You know, I've, I've asked Ares to nerf Cartouche, so I think in the next patch, uh, hopefully he'll he'll do that. <laughs> uh, but. But no, in, in this game, uh, Cartouche still in a commanding position. It feels he, he's built some blade wings. Um, P-Tac has no air defense to speak of that I can see. And uh, Cartouche ahead on metal as well. His income is quite a bit higher. His map control is really impressive. Um, is there any way P-Tac can, can come back in this game? What do you, what do you think? Is there, a, is there a chance for P-Tac to uh, turn things around? It's uh, that's a good question. It's very difficult once you choose T1 uh, uh, tanks yeah. to build. 
it's very difficult to get the anti-air with, along with it, really. So it's quite quite amazing that Cartouche chose so early on Blade Wing straight away to pivot. And he's reclaiming the metal behind him. So I know uh, P-Tac is trying to stop him, hopefully. That's so important Yeah. for the, for the long term, really. You need that metal. You need to get it, not have your opponent catch it. So. He's got some anti-air now, so that's pretty good. So what does that mean? The Blade Wings probably aren't very good now. So I wonder what Cartouche will do in response to that. Um, he'll probably stick with it for a while. Well, he could go bombers. Uh, he's going fighters right now. He's building some Avengers. Uh, or he could just try to avoid the uh, the Samsons or the, the Slashers, excuse me. So, but I'm more concerned just about like looking at the map. As you can see, uh, Cartouche has taken over most of the map. Let's go ahead and uh, look at the Twitch chat. Fine Step asks, does Arm have anything equivalent to the Blade Wing? The Arm has the Banshee which is the light gunship so it is it's kind of like a uh, less imba uh, brawler but uh, in general i think the blade wing is more useful early on you don't see banshees very often uh in professional games blade wings are extremely common especially in these 1v1 scenarios because they are hard to deal with it's hard to have uh anti-air everywhere mm. and uh Cartouche can use them surgically, as you can see here, just having them paralyze anything. Of course, uh, right. go ahead. No, he's doing well, because he's got, uh, just about, he got the anti -air next to it, so those Blade Wings are gone, now suddenly. Yeah. He's chasing him down, he's chasing him front, uh oh, Blade Wings are back again. Yeah, Blade Wings. He's doing alright. Oh, fellas. Hey, who's Hi, this? Adam. This is a dog, man. What's going on? I just came on. Nice. Comment with you guys. Yeah, it's it's good to have you here. We are just casting this game between Cartouche and P-Tac. And uh, again, Cartouche in a very commanding position. Uh, P-Tac does have some slashers in the back here, but uh, they're just not keeping up. Uh, these blade wings are so agile, wow. they can just kind of uh, kite and move around he's, these slashers. He's far behind. He's far behind. Cartouche got this easy. Wow. And he's, he's coming. in right here. Get him over right now. Once those things get paralyzed, over. See those cons? No, we came over that. It's over. He gave up already. Yeah, so p -Tac does call it. He will self-destruct everything. Well, only makes sense. You don't want to waste time anyways. So. I, I missed the beginning of the match, but there's, there must have been a very important moment right at the start, which kind of gave that momentum to Cartouche that he needed. Something happened early on, which decided the whole match, really, because that was it. He was off. That was a good game. Yeah, so, so what happened was uh, Cartouche came down with a group of instigators, like just three, and took out two of... Uh, p -Tac's construction vehicles for like for free and that was after that I think p -Tac struggled to recover because he was he couldn't expand as quickly like I was saying early on construction vehicles are so important every construction vehicle or k-bot you lose in the early game is just devastating to your economy um, and to your production I do feel I think he studies his opponent that's what makes Cartouche quite remarkable he simply studies very deeply and considers what his opponent uh, is probably likely to do. I think that's he, that's something about him that he, that he does do. Yeah, I still can't yeah. get over this crown. I love this crown that they gave him on his commander. That's just that's just too funny. Like that was brilliant. Just yeah. just not necessary. Just 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 styling on his opponents. Like I've got the crown. Right, no one else gets it. Yeah, he's been winning all the tourneys, man. He has. I mean, he deserves it, right? Like, you know, why not? Let's give him a crown. I just, I just find this so funny. Now let's get it. It gives him a real yeah. mystique, even during a, a team battle, like regular games of yeah. EA. You look at him walk around the, the battlefield. You're like, well, I've got to stay away from this guy. Yeah, exactly. It lets you know this is the guy you want to avoid, right? So, look how he switches. He switches building well, that we along with his factory. Patak, Patak improved a lot. Like yeah. he improved a lot. Like he wouldn't even stand a chance before. Maybe Bar helped a little bit, but he improved a lot. But I think he's dead right now. 
that three max start. Uh, it's got no LLT either. So Cartouche early on has sent fleas, like really early on, because he did it just with one solar. Uh, and then yeah. one max, he's just gone straight away, which is really crazy that PTAC hasn't done that. That's a remarkable. No, the reason you don't make LLTs here is it's a waste of uh, time where you could just make like units. Like yeah. Most people don't even make LFTs because you can defend with Jeffy's. Well, it's game over right now. He'll probably quit after this. So PTAC with a very greedy start here, um, not building any LLTs, deciding to build three mexes before starting his vehicle plant. Very greedy start. Um, well, he he he. the reason he started that way because he thought uh, Cartouche would be core. If he was core, he'd go... Um, He'd go K-Bots, and it's slower. He wouldn't rush. Yeah. That's the reason why he made the start. Yeah, so so P-Tech kind of taking a gamble here and deciding to do a greenier start and getting punished for it by Cartouche, this early flea aggression. Yeah, it was a gamble. Yeah, yeah it was thought, a gamble. He thought Cartouche would be core. If he yeah. was core, then he could do that start because you can't you can't get um, scouts fast enough up there. But couldn't he see from the, the selection screen? Or I guess you can change before the game starts. You can change No. Yeah, yeah. Before the game starts, you can change. It. Okay, yeah. so so you couldn't. So he didn't know what faction no. Cartouche was going to be, no. and Cartouche did punish this. Now Ptech isn't out of right. the game, guys. It's it's not over, but it is no. um, very. It's game dumb. over, man. It's, no, no, it's game over. Okay, you, you guys think it's over? Me. I mean, it, it, he is very far behind now. He he lost two metal extractors. Uh, yeah, he will quit. I mean, he has to sub the stroke after watch when Cartouche starts pulling up some. Oh uh, no! Expansion, it, it's over. So P Tech says no, in chat, only... "You were meant to vehicle." So he thought uh, Cartouche was going to go vehicle first, and uh, that's why he did the three starts. Okay, bots, you know he did the yeah. three starts. Do you see that? Just drive. Yeah, you kind of have to like guess your opponent. Yeah, exactly, man. It's it's beautiful, but it's unfortunate. Maybe next time, but. Um, it's a guessing game. It's a guessing game. This this game is a guessing game, especially one on one. He's hiding behind the mechs to try and get a bit of extra defense, which is very clever. So Cartouche with some more uh, flea aggression here. He is going to move in. Even the way he uses fleas is great. Look at those movements. Because the fleas, they start with actual their the gun uh, pointing backwards. <laughs> anyway, clever. Yeah, so uh, again, Cartouche in a very commanding position here. He's making uh, about 10 more metal per second. As you can see, he has expanded out onto the map. And uh, he does have K-Bots moving north. His commander is moving to kind of the east. And uh, p tac still just kind of stuck near his starting base. He is slowly moving out. But the problem is that uh, he doesn't have much defense and uh, another... Flea attack or just some uh, some peewees could uh, move up here and take Ooh. out everything PTAC has. PTAC desperately attempting to get some control over this map. He's got to get back into this game somehow. But uh, is it too late? Gotta take a miracle, man. Yeah, it's not too late. To me, it's too late. No, it's he's too late. Right now. <laughs> he's look got at the expansion. Lot. Look at the expansion, guys. It's look at the metal. So, so p -Tech moving in with some no, no, Jeffies. No. He's going to try to get some uh, harassment done. But uh, Cartouche has done a good job of building light laser towers on his expansions. However, with good micro, as we see here, you can kind of avoid the light laser tower range. So uh, he will probably take out this one solar collector. And uh, looking desperately to get anything done, he's got to try to claw his way back into this game if he can. Anything's possible. Yeah. He could really pivot to a different... He's got a real slow start, unfortunately, which is a real shame, but he's, he's still got the Cartouche quality. has yeah. all his mechs is defended by LT, so yeah. he's playing super safe. That's how he's going to win. Well, there's plenty of mechs, though, so I wouldn't worry. You know, he's, he's, there's plenty of mechs to, to get his... I wouldn't worry about that too much, but... Yeah, Cartouche almost doubling uh, p tax income here. I was going to say, before he... Built that vehicle. I was gonna say he's gonna build one really soon, and he built one. I know how this guy thinks. <laughs> oh, he done the same thing right there. So, you know, he uh, built that second lap. Yeah, Russ up mock right. in chat and Twitch chat saying, uh, "Would it have been a good idea to build a light laser tower at the start?" 
Certainly, if he had built this at the start, uh, it would have been harder yeah. for Cartouche. Yeah, I think it would have been a good yeah. idea. I agree with you. Yeah. 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 But I agree. People, people take a gamble because of this, yeah. because of he thought he was gonna go vehicles or K bots. So. Wow. Okay. He did take it. Like core K bots for me. P-Tac being annoying again. That perfect micro. There's 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 a place you can hide behind metal extractors that will prevent the LLT from hitting you with fleas and jeffies so uh good micro there but Ooh. ultimately will it be it's enough um it's, i wonder if they can see each other because look at those two armies he's really got a, those peewees he's kind of got to keep an eye on but uh, yeah to be honest i'm surprised cartouche has let p-tech come back into this game it felt like he could have maybe just ended it after that kind of early aggression uh but he well, has played defensively kind of he Go switched ahead. yeah he switched tactics for sure yeah he, he couldn't he couldn't have just completely destroyed it with just fleas and stuff he got over there quickly in scouts he sent a second wave which is the peewees one or two of them but this isn't p -Tac's dealing with this quite well actually so he's got potential it's yeah. not over for sure because this is gonna this is not a 10 minute match this will i predict go on a bit longer than that so no the, the players are now even on metal so so p -Tac has uh yeah. He has bounced back really effectively, and th th that is surprising. Um, yeah. Cartouche has slowed I mean, down. A lot of people were saying it was over in the chat, but, you know, at, at the beginning, they are like, it's over. Uh, p tacs going to leave, but uh, no, this is this is an even game now, guys. Um, Cartouche may have a small advantage just in terms of his positioning, and he's got better, uh, better defenses. He's got better light laser towers. Um, P -tax. I'll still be surprised if he wins this. He oh, yeah. I'll still be surprised. I will be because, you know, Cartouche is a really strong oh, player. Uh, I agree. Look, look at the difference. So P tax got that without any defense. Oh, it's 5 to 1, man. But he's going around the sides, and Cartouche is going around his side. So this is quite interesting. But he's car parked at the moment. Uh, P tax going for it. That's enough to go do some damage. So he's doing well. Yeah, p -Tac here with a small group, like eight flashes or so. And, uh, more attack mode. Yeah. Oh, he, he stopped. p -Tac stopped. Yeah, p -Tac, come on, man. Right you got it. No, no, no. p -Tac, come on. So, okay, p -Tac is finally moving down. Well, he can't decide what no. he wants to do with these flashes. He's reversed. Now he's moving. He's yeah. too late now. He's too far ahead. Might as well go. But, uh, yeah, Cartouche is now attempting to get these... Uh, these two construction vehicles, he will be successful. He does take out those two construction vehicles, and that is devastating. p -Tac attempting to get his own harassment done here. Uh, kill some eco, take out that construction K-Bot, and uh, maybe get some economic damage done. Go, 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 go. Don't go there. Oh, nah, cut all that will be resable. He's going to res all that, and yeah. He could have got those two mixes. He could have done some, yeah, a bit more damage. He would have lost these units for sure. But I think he's doing a bit of a run around. You now, see, but... you see how Cartouche um, has four nanos and the tech has none. That's going to be the game changer right now. And he's accessing. And look okay. at those medals right there too, as well. I mean, look at those wrecks that's been wasted. Like I said, it's going to be hard for him. It's going to yeah. be impossible right now. No, Hold certainly on. Cartouche is ahead, and he, he has been since his early lead. But uh, it's not over yet. Certainly, p -Tac, we can't count him out. But uh, Well, look at look at the nanos. you got to look at the nanos that's built. He has none. Right. So he's pumping less units. So that's the game changer right there. And look yeah, at Cartouche those Rex does have the, a lot of nanos. p -Tac. Now, he is building nanos. He's starting on his second one. But... Uh, a lot of people have pointed out in the chat that uh, Cartouche does have a, a much bigger economy in terms of energy. His energy economy is uh, probably about twice or two and a half times p tax He's got a lot more advanced solar collectors. And uh, things starting to look a bit dire for p -Tac. Certainly, he is falling behind... And he needs to find some kind of counter for all of this flash and peewee aggression moving up the northeast side of the map. 
Once he makes a, this attack, it'll be his last. Look at the energy level. He's, got he's a lacking energy. I know, he's chasing himself, isn't he? Yeah, I'll send these. I'll, if I was him, I'd send the come up. Send the come up now and start de gunning it. Yeah. So, go, go, go. But he needs E. He's too late now. Yeah, that's what I said. This is probably the last attack right here. There's no energy, moving no energy. In with a lot of Those nanos lines. are gone. What's he gonna go for? He's gonna go for the Once nanos. Once the nanos are gone, he's it's over. GG man. That's game. Yeah, that's a lot of flashes and uh P Tac valiantly attempted to uh, get back into the game after that uh, early punish. He was punished for this greedy bill he tried. But uh, at this point it is looking really bad. Look at that. He just goes around the base. He doesn't even, you know, he doesn't waste time. Yeah. Just maximum down. Taking out, taking out his legs, taking out his solar. Oh, it's terrible really. But no, good luck to him. Um, he was unlucky at the start really. He took a massive gamble. Yeah. Absolute massive gamble. Unfortunately, he didn't pay off this time. Yeah, he, he took a big gamble. Worked. And against a player like Cartouche, you, you got to be careful about that because if he gets ahead, it's very hard to uh, very hard to come back. And uh, yeah, Cartouche now kind of uh, finishing the game, just killing everything in his starting base. And uh, surprising that PTAC hasn't uh, controlled Deed out yet, but uh, maybe he's just fighting for his dear life here, thinking about what he wants to do for the next game. Yeah, he will finally explode. Wow. And so we have here another game on Comet Catcher. Uh, again, PTAC this time most likely going to play uh, a little less greedy. He does go core this time. So PTAC obviously with something different in mind, some uh, some other strategy than what he tried before, I would assume, and Cartouche also going core as well. So we have a uh, core ditto here, and uh, we'll have to see what PTAC has up his sleeve. Again, this is a best of five, and Cartouche is on game point. PTAC's got to be really careful. He wants to make sure that uh, whatever he does, it gives him ample time to uh, prepare. Uh, he's gone air, first thing, Cartouche. That's really interesting. Okay. Cartouche air start. going air first. Now, guys, air first is a thing. Uh, it can work, but yeah, as someone has already uh, noted, it is super risky. It is something, if you go air first, you have to get a lot accomplished. He's already... Oh! oh. He's, air, on, air on Comet Catcher is like, it's super hard. You need to be a really good player to do this. Because yeah. it's a big map. So if you mess up one time, the person that's being bombed could easily rebuild. You know, like, yeah. if you don't bomb right. He's just built a one bomb. If this is a small map, it. it would work. If it's a small map, it'll work easier. Okay, so... The Go payoff ahead. is greater on wind maps too. Solars are harder to kill. Yeah, I think Cartouche could Yeah, th this is a really risky up. play. And perhaps only Cartouche could get away with it. Now he is reclaiming the aircraft plant, so he's gonna he's gonna build this one bomber and then tech into vehicles, probably or maybe he's unlikely to get away with this because PTA's got a lot of uh, scouts out too. Oh, he's building a thing as well. He's also yeah. building a blade wing. Uh, he, he's going to see the bomber and uh, is he the, can the counter attack is on for sure. So One P blade wing isn't going to stop uh, all those scouts. P-Tac yeah. has no idea this is coming, obviously. Uh, oh, he, he does. He oh, does. he's seen it. He's seen it now. Okay, he's, he's building, building anti-air. Yeah, he spotted it for sure. So he knows this is coming and uh, he needs at least a couple of these. He is building a second one. And uh, here we go, Cartouche moving in with that bomber. This is absolutely crucial. Yeah, gotta get Cartouche oh, has to get soon, something man. done. <laughs> just to get one max. He got wow, one max. He, no, it's not. He just yeah. did that for the show, man. He know he knew that wasn't gonna work. Look, look at Cartouche's base. That Cartouche. That, well done, Pete because he actually continued the fight while that bomber was going on. That's a clever idea. Look, yeah, look, look, look. Wow. Now, every, like. 
Yeah, this is uh, this is looking bad for Cartouche, obviously, because he's now way, way behind. Uh, I but stand corrected. Yeah, that uh, one blade wing impede a lot of weasels. Well, actually, I take it back. He can still win this. Why? Because that 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 transporter is a big difference. It's a huge difference because he can transport like cons all the way to the top. Now, now this is funny. Exactly. He's picking up these paralyzed one. weasels. And flying them into his own light laser tower. This is a pretty funny tactic here by Cartouche. Now, Cartouche is behind, guys, but you can't ever count Cartouche out. He can absolutely come back into this mm, game. He isn't, he isn't far behind. He isn't far behind. The game just started. Like I said, that transport right there and that blade wing is going to make a huge difference. He has a big yeah. advantage by just having that. If he made two, would have been crazy. Yeah. So, uh, the truth is, uh, Cartouche, even though he had that risky play, and uh, even though it didn't work out, he he's certainly not out of this game by any means. He does now have a transport to ferry him around the map, which uh, is a pretty nice advantage. It's a pretty good... Uh, Okay, he wins. It's over. He wins again. Because of that transporter. That's a huge difference, guys. Okay, he yeah, so, so, so let's not call games before, you know, yeah, let's let's not call games, like, you know, two minutes in. Okay, like, let's cool, let's cool. give players time to actually play the game before we uh, make that decision. I guess I'm just feeling it by experience, though. So. Uh, okay, well, we, we don't know that he wins yet. I mean, it's still, uh, we're still early into the game, and, uh, Cartouche certainly favored just because he's the reigning champion. Almost no matter what strategy he goes, he's probably going to have the advantage. But uh, certainly p -Tech not out of this. p -Tech is ahead on metal here at the beginning. He is uh, making 20 to Cartouche's 16. But uh, as we've seen in the past in these big Comet Catcher type engagements cartouche does seem to usually come out on top just because he has credible micro and uh very good map control so good uh, radar from pta in the middle of the map what'd you say good radar good forward radar yeah yeah there is a nice radar here by ptac and you can uh, tell he's a, little, he's a little bit conscious of what air units cartouche has because he doesn't know yeah so p -Tech probably suspects that Cartouche Ooh. reclaimed his aircraft plant, but he doesn't know for sure. Please. Oh, God, he's got that unit. Almost got it. That would have morally been here. It's, it's far from over, for sure. No, it's it's not. Very yeah, it's it's still a close game. I mean, he's, he's clever because he's flying around, obviously. Yeah. Capital is mixed. His comms, yeah, he can look after his comms for sure, especially early on, but... Uh, yeah. Yeah, p -Tech is ahead on uh, Eco, as you would expect, after Cartouche's aircraft plant start. Um, but, even though p -Tech is currently ahead on Eco, that doesn't mean anything against Cartouche. He can easily come back into the game or match him. All it takes are some good engagements, some harassment. Get him, get that blade ring. Go on. Oh, he's, he's gone. Perfect. Look at that. Run away. Sneaky, sneaky. It's actually a decent game, man. Yeah, it it's is, it so is a pretty close one. Uh, it's a pretty even game. And uh, Cartouche still ferrying his commander around with this Valkyrie. He will continue to expand out onto the map. And uh, this single blade wing deserves a medal. It has done a lot. Has it still hasn't been killed? Seven HP blade wing. And uh, both players still continuing to expand out. Now, Comet Catcher is one of the most high skill maps in a one v one because it is almost it's like almost flat, and there's a ton of metal, so it is a it's very hard to defend. Everything. It's a big map. Yeah. Definitely comes down to player skill in terms of uh, 
how to uh, maneuver it and uh, micro and macro correctly. Good attack on the top right. Good attack right there. Yeah, Cartouche is moving in with the uh, army here of instigators. And uh, at this point, this slasher probably not going to be that effective. Uh, P-Tech has gone, uh, or excuse me, Cartouche is not on air anymore, so these slashers, not really necessary, and Cartouche is moving down the middle, P-Tech having a really tough time dealing with this instigator aggression. Yep, he's killing all the expansion, that's his goal right now. Expansion cut off. Yeah. And Smoke Dragon saying he was wrong. I think a lot of people in the chat probably going to eat crow as they were saying, oh my god, game over, game over. You know, two seconds in after Cartouche went air first. This is not. This is why we don't say game over <laughs> two seconds in. It's not a... That's right. You got you to gotta let Ooh, it play out, guys. You just don't know. And uh, yeah, this looking good for Cartouche. He is microing very Ooh, well. If he finds that top left. That's going to be a good damage. Top left expansion. And uh, P-Tech really just struggling to... Uh, really struggling to uh, halt this, this aggression of Cartouche all over the map. Just kind of relentless. With his instigator spam. And uh, P-Tech just doesn't seem to be able to keep up with it. I mean, just looking at the... Uh, the number of instigators here, Cartouche just has more. And uh, as I was saying before, Cartouche just has good macro. I mean, he just he's he's good at building units. And uh, P Tech really struggling to keep up with the production here. He is building a nano turret now, and uh, he's got a lot of solars. But uh, God, I mean, Cartouche just has like, what is this? A dozen, maybe 18, 15 instigators here. Moving up the uh, yeah, top I'm right part of the map. 90. He's got 19. I'm surprised he didn't scout the top left. It's surprising though, because obviously <laughs> you'd think our P-Tag... The chat... The chat's are saying it's okay to say good game now. Yeah, go, go ahead, Fonzie, what yeah. were you saying? He started, obviously, Cartouche pivoted first to an air lab, built his three units, transport... Yeah. A stink, a blade wing, and a bomber, that was good. and that was quite interesting, obviously. But Peter had a factory at the very beginning. He, technically, you know, he had the time to have a bigger army, but he has plenty of metal in the in the, in the store in storage. He's got plenty of uh, solos, but yeah. I don't think he's got the army. He needs he needs units. Yeah, but no, it's, it's far from over. No, I, I agree with you, and and even some levelers here would be pretty good. I think you know if he's if Cartouche is going. Gator spam, a leveler is always an option to try to curtail that aggression. Uh, but uh, yeah, as as you guys have mentioned, as the chat is mentioning, P-Tac just not using his metal. So yeah, p -tech just not using his metal very efficiently. Uh, on a map like this, you definitely need to use all of your metal. You need to make sure that you're not maxing out. It's okay to uh, overflow energy, but really you cannot overflow metal. You need to use your resources efficiently. And uh, Cartouche, even though he started out behind, has just used his metal more efficiently. And uh, man, he just has more stuff. I mean, that's that's what it boils down to this game. He's got more units. But uh, it's not over, guys. p -Tac has gone into air. Uh, so has Cartouche. Both players have gone into air now. Which is pretty common as the second uh, second building, second factory. So uh, we will have to see how they utilize air. Skirmish is continuing in the northwest here. Gator versus Gator. And uh, p has got to be careful with these construction vehicles. He is moving them kind of into the fray here to reclaim. But he will lose those. And bringing in some blade wings of his own. And Cartouche bringing in Avengers to counter the blade wings. So... Uh, Cartouche was ready for that. He was prepared for p air transition there. Very nice. And uh, I don't know. What do you guys think? What do you think, Fonzie? How's this game looking? 
It's been a tough match. The P Tech is very difficult. He should have built more nanos early on, really. He, he went that metal, lots, metal, lots man. That metal yeah. gift is that hurts. He, he, metal it's gift on top left. Got, yeah, and I would have been a bit more defensive. He chased up just uh, about yeah, just before that. He chased he chased Cartouche's army, which is already way ahead. It was going to go pivot around, wasn't it? So he was going to lose those mech spots. So he lost those mech spots, and he lost the army at the same time. So he could have waited, but he could have held back for a bit, and then hopefully he would have had a bigger army to be able to like hold the line. Yeah. No, it, it is difficult. If if you've ever played Comet Catcher, you know, anyone watching the stream, if you've ever played a 1v1 on Comet Catcher, it is difficult to keep your, uh, you know, using your resources. The amount of metal on this map is insane, and it really is hard to keep up production. But um, you have to, if, especially at, at this level of play, you really have to use your resources efficiently. You cannot overflow on metal. Against a player like Cartouche, that's just a mistake that you will get punished for. As you can see in this game, Cartouche just outproducing PTAC, even though PTAC had a better economy early on. Um, Cartouche just using his resources more effectively. And uh, so many instigators. I mean, my god. It's just, just an army of them. But uh, again, PTAC holding on, doing the best he can here. Uh, you know, he doesn't have quite as many units as Cartouche, but he is still producing here. And uh, will we see T2 this game? What do you guys think? Do you think uh, we'll see either player tech into uh, advance? It's going to be, as the game, you know, like, uh, it depends on the game. But I don't think so. I, I don't think they stay, uh, stay at T1. It'd be interesting if I reckon PTAC's more likely to go try and go T2. Yeah. However, look at the army. Look at the army coming from right now. He was holding back for a bit, Cartouche, but now he's coming. But no, he's holding back a bit. You got to keep, you got to keep on your toes, really. I'd, I wouldn't engage. I'd step fall back a bit, try to get work on it slowly. But yeah, he could catch him out. He's running away. Attack knows it's smart not to go T2. The comms right, right there. Right. Th look, the cartoon just comes right at the front. Yeah. Now, of course, this is this is TA, so all it does take is uh, killing the comm. Even if you're very far behind, you can still win if you get a snipe. So PTAC is aware of that. Maybe he goes for a, a desperate uh, kind of last-ditch effort to catch out Cartouche's comm, but that is a lot of light laser towers. It would be difficult. Perhaps with bombers he could do it. But, yeah, uh, Yep just made it. A player Yep made a comment. Why go T2 when the best unit is Gator is in T1 lab? Very true. <laughs> Very yeah. true. That's why not. Why people, go don't, T2? people don't really choose Gator too often on the team matches for some reason. I think because you need that critical mass. You need a certain. Yeah. No, I agree with you. To get it working, but. They're, they're okay. Look, 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 look. But then PTAC's got the better units. He's got those tanks. He's got the range. He could. But, Cartouche has metal to make LTs. So, those aren't going to do much, I would think. See, he's spamming LTs in a base, so. He has a metal for it. Uh, that's going to be a feed. Okay, so PTAC moving in with a bit of a counterattack at the uh, bottom left of the map. Trying to get into Cartouche's production here. There are a lot of nanos, but they are well positioned. Cartouche has positioned his nanos behind these walls of solar collectors and light laser towers so that they're they're not easy to get to. Carry and, uh, on. Don't, don't stop. Don't stop. Man, yeah. that gif on the top left, that hurts. So PTAC getting something accomplished down here. It hasn't been a complete waste. But certainly not as much as you'd like, or have hoped to, I'm, I'm sure. If you could yeah. have gotten into this production, killed those nano towers, that would have been pretty devastating. But uh, Oh, he has a chance here, top left. That's a chance, because of the commander. Alone. Yeah. Yeah. Cartouche has got his commander that's way out there. He's on the check. That's crazy. Cartouche had that little... Uh, 
you know, little base that he set up, all the yeah. LTs around him. You can see he was worried about it. Now he's sent his comm. Yeah. He's take it, taking big risks because uh, he's got tanks now. He's got uh, Raider tanks, so they should be better than the Gators. So. Yeah. Again, I'm surprised we don't see a couple levelers just mixed in. It would be really nice against this Gator spam, but... Uh, yeah, uh, PTAC opting for a lot of raiders, and uh, raiders in mass are pretty good against instigators, but uh, he's also got necros oh. here in the background, resurrecting Good. units. Let's go for it. Chase him down. That's what he needs to do. Yeah. No, I agree with you. I think we really need, uh, PTAC needs to try to snipe off Cartouche. And he certainly knows. he. Oh man, that's a chance right there. That's his only chance right there. Yeah, he take needs it, take it. He's resin. Oh, there's no fighters. Man, no fighters, man. So Cartouche hey. moving in Ooh, with his commander. Right there. And that uh, has the uh, higher economy. Yep. Yo, right there. That's his chance right there. That's the only right there. P tech. Don't group your units up. He no, he fine. does he see the commander, but he's deciding right if he wants to. Uh, <laughs> He's deciding if he wants to go Turn in. around! Turn around! No. Yeah. He's decided he doesn't man. want to try to snipe the commander. He's got enough tanks to do that. He does. He, he has enough. a check right there. Just spread your units. I he think he win. wants the medal, but, hey. but look at Cartoon. Wow. Come on. Turn around. He's doing it. He needs to hurry up because the levelers he, will be here soon. He has that. Right there. Oh my god. He sees the commander, but he doesn't. he doesn't take it. I just don't get yeah. it. He has all the he has all the units to kill him. Yeah. Yeah. Go on. Yeah. Yeah. All well, the units. I agree. Now he's gonna go in that crater and it's gonna save him. That's game right there. Come on, dude. Do something. Oh my gosh. Go go go. So with all these necros, uh, it is P Tac yeah, is getting a massive advantage as these fights happen. He can just resurrect every unit after it dies. And uh, Galtus is stalling energy too. Unbelievably, PTAC now pulling into the lead here, it seems, just in terms of both eco and army size. And uh, Cartouche now pulling back. Perhaps the reason PTAC didn't go for the snipe is that he sensed that he is ahead, that he will win in the long term. And uh, Cartouche now teching into levelers, surprisingly. But... Uh, Wow, this game could really go either way, guys. This is hey, super man, close. Still a chance. This is it. Oh, the armies come together now. So this is the moment. I'll, he has to go for it because these are going to catch up to him. Yeah. So, yeah. P tac can move down yeah. here, try to snipe the commander or Level take off the base. Now. And uh, this many raiders is scary, guys. It's just scary. It's a lot to deal with. And uh, moving into these light lady towers, the blade wings coming in. From both sides. Where's the anti air? Yeah, Cartouche. Sure no -air. Yeah, Cartouche flying in with some Avengers. Both players have some Avengers. He's, he's got to pull back a bit. Yeah. Oh, God. Now he's got the levelers coming. Where's he going? Where's he running? No, he's going through. What are you doing, Cartouche? Cartouche moving into the fray here, and I don't think it's the greatest idea. But uh, risk, risk, man. Very okay, risky considering the number of units on the battlefield. Yeah, it's a close. Oh, battle here we go. Sure. That's a chance. That's a chance. Don't Levelers on the way. Game over. TG, come oh, on. There's the calm. Get him. There's the calm. Okay, yeah. Go Cartouche on. moving his uh, calm in here. Over. Very come risky. Come on, go. Come on. Get him. Get him, buddy. Oh my God, he's oh, so my low. God. 17% And he does survive. He's now cloaked, so uh, P-Tech cannot see him at the moment. But uh, oh, holy no. cow, Cartouche is still alive. He's gonna walk out with uh, okay, 20%. I know you said close. don't say good game, but it's over. <laughs> it's GG. Look at all those wrecks. It's over. Those are gifts. That's incredible how he got away with that. Yeah, I, mean, I can't. I cannot believe Cartouche that was survived a, that. That was a good bait. Baited him in. Yeah, he did. That was bait a good him bait. In. 
And perhaps that's the reason P-Tech didn't try for the snipe earlier. He knew it was a bait. No, the, the, that earlier was the best chance. There was no bait earlier. He had no units to help him. That was the best chance. All his units were in the middle. Well, he yeah, does have the D-Gun, and Cartouche is pretty good with the D-Gun, so... Yeah, tons of units, man. Very, that was, like, more than enough. Very close very game. Good yeah, it just... It yeah, those type of games... Things, yeah. These type of games are all about decision-making. Gotta make the right decision, or it's gonna cost you. So, uh, what were you saying, Fonzie? I was just going to comment about, yeah, Cartouche has a deadly D-gun on him, that com. He can look after himself, yeah. for sure. Uh, you have to be really on top of it. So you have to spread out your units. Yeah. It's always good advice. He probably should have spread out his units a bit more. Didn't seem like he had the cohesion. He, he could have always got him. Like, he was so close, 20% health. I reckon he had an opportunity then, even then. However, Cartouche got away. Yeah. Now, Randy in the chat saying it's still not over, and that is a sentiment I agree with. Guys, this, is, this isn't this is StarCraft. This is Balanced Annihilation. It is never over till it's over. You could always snipe the calm. You should never count the player out until they control D or explode. But yeah, like Fonzie was saying, P-Tac was winning. He really was ahead. Um, perhaps if he had not tried to go for that calm snipe, he would still be ahead. But uh, Cartouche baiting him really well there, and living with just a sliver of health. It's really unbelievable. And uh, Cartouche now moving into his base. These Necros kind of useless now, because they don't have anything to reclaim. And uh, P-Tac in a lot of trouble, for sure. Grumpy saying, going for calm all in, lost in the game. I, I tend to I tend to agree that going for that calm all in was probably the turning point. Pitak definitely felt like he was ahead there. And then uh, made that risky decision, made that uh, gamble there, and got punished for it. But my god, it looked like he was going to die. Don't you guys think, don't you think it felt like Cartouche... His calm was about to explode. We he should have been dead. Should have been. Yeah, yeah, we were looking, and there's plenty of moments. Yeah, that's it's the way it goes. Man. He's clever. He, he wasn't. He was standing next to the ridge as well. That was actually a big effect. And he was right in the middle of his base, so he had plenty. That time as well. The levelers, they were. They took a while to get there. So if actually Peter went a bit earlier, yeah, he had sighted it a bit quicker, perhaps. He would have seen the the comma a bit, yeah, you know, and then being able to go after it better. But I don't think he did. Or I think he had like considerations. He didn't quite know what Cartouche had. Uh, he had air. He had air cover. He had blade wings. Yeah, man, it's been such a close game. I mean, really, P Tac pulling it back with those nectar or necros, and then uh, and then kind of throwing it again with the with that calm snipe all in that almost worked I mean my god like if you just microed it a little better he could you know he could have taken the game off cartouche but uh, again it's still not over it's just cartouche is now it feels way ahead and uh, someone asking t2 now that is the question will cartouche go t2 such a good game. He's, got, he's getting back in there. Yeah. Yeah. Do not count P Tech out until it is over. But uh, damn, this game is so back and forth. It's crazy. It is just like a slugfest between these two players. And uh, yeah, we may see T two. It feels like Cartouche. Might be a good moment to transition. Yeah, it is. You're right. right. It's about that time. Yeah, Should. it is. And he's got a lot of fighting. It's a pretty long game. Pretty long game. Oh. Go ahead, Fonzie. Minutes. What were you saying? Well, if I was Peter, I wouldn't be attacking. I'd be falling back, falling oh, yeah. back to the right line. I wouldn't be engaging. Look at that. that he's done this before, so that's a real dangerous move. I know he's got quite a similar size army, but 
I would have fall, fallen back until the right moment. Keep on falling back until you got the right moment to get. Him. Yeah. No, I agree with you. It's, it's really risky to engage here. Now he's just sending units in anything he can get because that's a big army right outside his face. Fair play to Peter though. He's resurrecting all those tanks that were sent in earlier. So, nah, it's all good. Cartouche is no fool though. He's good at, you know, he's taking his time. He's not done ho, but he's, he's yeah. definitely a. You can't keep on losing your entire army at the front. You really need to keep your shape. You need to have a certain the direction of where you're going. You can't just you can't just engage them when they want to engage you. You need to fall back when you need to. You need to fight on your own terms if you can. Yeah. Someone in the Twitch chat asking is T1 artillery really that unusable? T1 vehicle artillery is very usable, but uh, it's kind of not useless not gotcha. in combat. Uh, and uh, you see it more in team games, really. Uh, it's not not as common in 1v1s. It is good. It has its place, for sure. But uh, in this kind of game where you're constantly fighting... They just uh, the T1 vehicle artillery doesn't doesn't really do much in in direct combat. It's pretty useless. So yeah, PTAC at this point way behind and uh, Cartouche spamming out blade wings probably like two a second or something. Insane production speed of blade wings here and uh, oh he's running away. He is running away. Bit surprising. Why is he chasing him? You might think he can get something out of it, but he's just chasing it. Go past it, yeah. Run through it. Keep on going, I suppose. But very difficult. I don't. Why is he, why is he running back? Oh, he's concerned about this base on the corner. I think that's why he's just yeah. noticed it. I wonder if he knows his comms there as well, because obviously Peter has got his comm in the corner as well. Look, this is how Cartouche reacts to the situation. He might have actually seen the comm. He must see something, or he's worried there's a secret base there that there should have been one. There should have been one, but there wasn't. Um, we'll see. He's got time. Go on, go on, Peter. You got time? Get, get around the sides. Get him chasing you. Run him around the whole map while you build another army. But. Oh. That he's chasing them. He's not he's going for quite a heavily defended area. He's sending scouts. In. Yeah, this is a uh, cartouche now moving down the east side, uh, taking out the remainder of Pitax Eco. And uh, scout. tightening the noose. If you're uh, familiar with Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu terminology, he's got him in a uh, he's got him in a pretzel now. He's kind of got him in an arm lock, or you know, choose your analogy. Attack in a horrible situation, and uh, yeah, he will finally GG out. But my God, that was a close game. Yeah, uh, of course it, it took Cartouche trolling at the start <laughs> in some ways to make it a close game but uh certainly could have gone either way and uh p-tac just played it a little better could most certainly have pulled out but cartouche will take this series 3-0 now did aries say this is best of one i could have swore he said that but maybe um, you would think it would be best of three. Let me ask. Let me ask real quick. Uh, actually, let's just ask in chat here. Best of three. So yeah, let's confirm that this is. Oh, it is best of one. That's what I thought. So, guys, this is a death match. Uh, this is a. Uh, the players get one. One. You know, as Eminem would say, you know, one chance, one opportunity to uh, win this match. 
Yeah, they've both got uh, similar starts. They've both got similar starts. Well, one's gone core. Yeah. Master Bell, which is interesting. Yeah. And obviously, Teddy's gone arm. He hasn't built an Elvatini's base, so but he hasn't got a unit. He's got they no, built a flea. So there's AKs coming straight for him. So how is he going to stop those two? That's Honestly. a good point. AKs are very strong, and uh, Teddy hasn't really built any defense. He is going a greedier start. Look at that! Uh, he runs away with his flea. Master. He does have his commander, and he can use his laser or D gun, but uh, Teddy. In trouble here, does. Master Bell moving that AK forward. No, he does have this light laser tower. I didn't see, so he does have yeah. that. Yeah, that's good. He's clever. Look how compact his base is. He's got common yeah. one side. He's got the LT on the other. That's very clever. He's uh, he's building more solar. But he's got more of an eco going. Master Bell's doing fine. He's building units, isn't he? But I don't know. At the start, it looks like Teddy's doing better, but. He's got an AK outside his base, so you don't know what's going to yeah. happen. Like Yup said here in the uh, in the game chat, there was that LLT there I didn't see because it kind of blends into the uh, map. Black is uh, not a color you see too often. But uh, yeah, he is right. Teddy got a pretty decent start here. Pretty nice, like you said, compact base. And uh, But here's the thing. AKs versus Peewees, AKs are going to win that if microed correctly. So uh, Master Bell, if he's building these AKs, should have an advantage in these early engagements. Um, if he keeps the Peewees out of range of these AKs. And uh, we'll have to see how that pans out. This is an interesting map, a lot of Geos. Uh, we'll see if the players want to take advantage of that. And uh, Master Bell moving his commander here to the south. And uh, Teddy also moving his commander to the south. So uh, this game could potentially end very quickly, depending on uh, how aggressive. The uh, players want to be here. But uh, overall, very... I would say uh, normal starts for both players, nothing too out of the ordinary here. And uh, Teddy building some Rockos, that's an interesting choice. And uh, moving forward with his commander, he's got to be careful, there is a light laser tower here, and as I mentioned earlier, these light laser towers are extremely effective against commanders, especially if you have a uh, kind of a wall of them. Teddy moving in here with this group of Hueys. He will get into the heart of Master Bell's base and uh, take out quite a few Solar Collectors. That is very annoying for Master Bell. That will put him that, behind. Go ahead. That LLT wasn't shooting because he had a massive E still. Yeah. If he had spaced out his wings a little bit more, been a bit more careful, he would have uh, been able to shoot them all. But, um, it's, he's still doing all right. He's still can definitely uh, build up from this, but that's definitely a step back for him because Teddy is on the. Well, he's getting a bit defensive now, but uh, we we we'll see how we we'll see how it plays out. Yeah, so uh, Master Bell is behind on uh, energy production now. He just has these three solars. And uh, just looking at the the chart here. Ooh, uh, go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. Yes. Uh, Teddy is making about two and a half times as much energy. He's at two, 250. To Master Bell's 100. So uh, Teddy's certainly winning the uh, energy war here, but... Uh, not he's it doesn't look like he's using all his metal he does need to use his metal more efficiently and uh teddy with a beamer here beamer very strong early on it's just kind of a better light laser tower oh he's got a lot of m he's got a massive m uh stool right now yeah he's reclaiming that's the right thing to do yeah he needs that metal he really needs metal right now just to get case uh mechs is back up and running Teddy on a better po with a better position here on the map, as you can see. He uh, has taken the bottom here. Now these 
are two spots. Basically, they count for two for one. And uh, so this is like four spots that he's taken down here. Master Bell is moving in with uh, a few storms, and those will outrange the LLTs. But uh, he's got to be careful. Both commanders very close to one another. And uh, Master Bell attempting to take back the south of the map yet again. Uh, a good choice, as I said, because uh, killing those two metal spots is, or those two metal extractors is like taking away four spots worth of metal from Teddy. But Teddy is still way ahead on Eco. He has just got uh, a lot more metal across the map. Of course, uh, Master Bell is moving in here with his AK, moving across the uh, the north side and taking out as many metal uh, spots as he can. But uh, Teddy again with this relentless harassment, just this Pee Wee run bys, getting into the the back line and even killing the Kbot Lab. Master Bell in a dire situation now. He he no longer has a way to produce units. He, he doesn't have a Kbot Lab, and uh, he's more or less just getting surrounded by Teddy here. So, uh, yeah, guys, this is looking pretty bad for Master Bell. He's he, walking towards his base. Yeah, he doesn't have a he's base. <laughs> This he's always walking towards Teddy's base, though, isn't he? He's got his calm. Yeah, got yeah. Units. He could actually, he could actually, because he's got enough actually to uh, go after the base. So it's, it'll take a while to get there. So Teddy's got a certain amount of time to kind of prepare for that. But it'll be interesting to see. He's going right for the base. He might be able to dig on it. You never know. He might be able to set it back to zero. <laughs> yeah, if he's got, could be a base trade situation for sure. It's an option. Yeah, yeah. I'll keep keep on walking. Keep on walking in, Bell. Now the funny gone. thing is that Bell, I think, just used the last of it, his energy on that D-gun, so he, he he can no longer D-gun. He's only got his laser. Oh no, he he did. He's got energy for D-gun. Oh no, but uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, Teddy just with the better map control there. But no, it'd be really interesting. Teddy against PTAC. Uh, I feel Teddy will win. Well, he did last time. I mean, this was this is essentially how the Crown Cup two went, very similar. And I believe Teddy did beat PTAC in the loser finals. Uh, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, it was close, as you said. Both these players very evenly matched. Uh, PTAC, oh, yeah. I think, might uh, be more likely to uh, go T two, but uh, this is a smaller map. As you mentioned, uh, smaller than Comet Catcher, and uh, this could be. We'll have to see, right? We'll have to see what the players do. They both did start core. Now, why do you think they both went core? What's your, what's your explanation for that? Why do you think they uh, chose core? Ooh, Strongest like faction. Strongest like professionals choose core. You think so? You, you think it's just stronger <laughs> right now? They're quite unique. Now, Cores, uh, in a lot of ways, got more unique abilities, more unique units, uh, in a lot of ways. So, and they, they probably like Pyros. If you can get to Pyros, that's what their, that's what their, their golden egg would be, really. Uh, I know Teddy does like to choose Core, so. p probably did that for the same reason. He probably considered that he would choose Core, so he went Core. It's typically more defensive. So. And vehicles are better. Both players go in vehicle, not too unexpected on this map. It is a larger map. Uh, the speed of vehicles is very useful. We've got a... Oh, Patek is actually playing. I thought he was going to leave. Let me take over. But he's playing. And uh, this should be a good game. Uh, both players with a similar start, taking their three metal spots before going into vehicles. And uh, one reason they might be going core are the uh, the exploiters, the armed metal extractors. These those are pretty good on bigger maps like this, the open maps that it's hard to defend all the surface area. Exploiters are usually more popular than the arm equivalent, the twilight, which uh, you don't see twilights too often. Do you guys ever see twilights? And one v ones. 
Um, yeah, sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah, the exploiter certainly more popular, um, and uh, that might have something to do with it. The exploiters are a pretty pretty nice way to defend on these bigger maps, but uh, blade wings as well are a huge factor. We've seen games in the past that blade wings can absolutely dominate and uh, take over the game. Of course, the arm does not have the blade wing. So here at the beginning, though, both players having more of a defensive start. Uh, P-Tac does kill a metal extractor with a uh, weasel, so that is annoying. Nothing too devastating. And uh, Teddy with his own little weasel harassment here. See what he can get around. done. Yeah, look, look, look. Wow, look at that. Yep. One for one. Go on. Yeah, no, nice. Oh. No, he didn't quite kill it. Very impressive there. Lived with 4 HP. So, uh, yeah, some shenanigans going on up here, building some dragon's teeth around this metal extractor to block the flea. And, uh, but ultimately, neither player getting too much accomplished here at the, uh, at the start. Uh, both players at this point just building out their instigators and expanding onto the map. Guys, if you are joining, if you are just now joining, this is the Crown Cup 3 Balanced Annihilation Tournament. And we are in the Losers Final, which is a best of three. This is the first game of the Loser Final. Teddy versus P-Tech, uh, very evenly matched players. And uh, both players have gone core vehicles, so they are... Uh, Yeah, they play similar to each other, yeah. so they probably actually they enjoy that more because obviously some certain players have that chaos factor. They do. They try different things, which you wouldn't expect, and that obviously throws players off quite a lot. Um, it's looking like Peter has got the edge. He's gone around the base. He's going with his army. He's engaging. Yeah, Peter is the aggressive aggressor here. He is moving in. And uh, if he can get this construction vehicle, that would be pretty huge. It looks like he will get it. So p -Tac, nice aggression here. He is uh, pushing Teddy into a corner. Literally and metaphorically. But uh, Teddy now uh, defending pretty well. They, they have similar instigator count, so it will come down to micromanagement. And... Uh, yeah, some uh, some players drawing on the map here, very uh, very mature guys. Yeah, thank you. And we will. You can oh. you, you can move that if you, there's a there's a button on the bottom right hand corner next. Oh to yeah, the yeah, the the eraser. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, I can remove that. But uh, I will say, it's still a very even game. Uh, both players. Similar ecos at this point. And uh, now, P Tech did take out a construction vehicle. And that will put Teddy a little behind, but uh, maybe not too much because Teddy is still expanding out. He has a construction vehicle uh, in the center or going towards the center and one in the north. And uh, p -Tech just doesn't seem to be as expanding as quickly. He does have construction vehicles, but... Uh, Ooh, he's getting stretched out, isn't he? Look, he's getting stretched. Yeah. Bad timing. He's coming in. See if uh, p -Tech can do something with this. He probably will, because he's a good player. Look. Look yeah, that. some weasel, weasel harassment here. Can he get this con? Oh, that would just be devastating if he could. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. No, he can't quite get the con, but he will get this metal extractor. And probably this one too. Teddy going for a counterattack with about six or seven instigators here. That's quite clever. Yeah, and he might take out these two cons that were just out in the open. They were working on a light laser tower, but not in time, and those will be taken out. So nice counterattack by Teddy. Caught, uh, caught P-Tac with his pants down. And uh, now, P-Tac kind of... 
kind of in a bad position. It feels like. No, they've still got plenty of opportunity because he's got the Zel he's got the he's going to rebuild those mixes, but he's kind of he's moving backwards now. But he's uh, things are going fine for both players. They they probably both feel quite secure at the moment. Will they engage? Are they going to try and do something? Or are they going to? I reckon. They, ooh, he's going for it. He's going to. See what it's in the middle. Not the whole army though. He's just gonna go check it out. Yeah. Um, so Teddy down here in the bottom and the south moving in with about four gators here and uh, one light laser tower will not be enough to stop this aggression. But uh, Ptech is now moving down some instigators of his own. Not before Teddy takes out a con. Teddy doing a really good job here of taking out Ptech's cons and uh, that will be. Quite annoying. It takes a while to rebuild those and get them back out to the front line. So, uh... It's still really close, though. Uh, p -Tac being very aggressive with his commander, he has moved him to the, uh... Essentially the center of the map. And, uh, building some metal extractors and light laser towers. Meanwhile, Teddy, with his commander, has kept him at his starting base. Now building nano turrets. So Look at that uh, unit movement. Go ahead. Look at the bit. Yeah, sorry at the top. Okay, you can see uh, the both of you up there, but he, he kind of caught him out then because he tapped moves his army south. Yeah. And then Teddy just took that open space. Now he's just going right round. This might not. It's not. Still do very well. He might. He might actually try and retreat after this, but if he can catch this now, he might want to go right round the base. Yeah, Teddy moving to the north. East with this army of gators, but uh, Ptac with a good defense here, he does he does seem to be ready for this. And uh, yeah, he did well, actually. Yeah, nice defense there. He didn't he didn't get too much. He killed a few things, but he left a whole nice Christmas of metal up here, so he will reclaim all of that and uh, get a nice boost to his economy. And Ptac is taking the mid here with his commander. Uh, just building this LLT spam in the middle, and uh, Teddy might have a hard time breaking that position once PTAC has secured it. Uh, as I said before, Teddy being a little less aggressive with his commander, he's really just been in the base the whole game. He hasn't really left the starting position, but he is now moving out. And, uh, yeah, this is what I was talking about earlier, these exploiters, the armed metal extractor, they are uh, quite effective, especially against just instigators. Yeah. A nice uh, nice counter, nice defense, especially with uh, LLTs surrounding them or in the in the area. It might be hard to break this position, but uh, P-Tech now building raiders. Yeah, he's got enough time to build that LLT, free. Two, one. Yeah, just in time, but not enough. Yeah, and uh, P Tech does kill the, those defenses, but uh, Teddy now with levelers, and uh, levelers are really designed to destroy instigator spam. So uh, if Teddy can get a critical mass of levelers onto the battlefield here, P-Tech may be in some trouble. Of course, P-Tech is building raiders, which are a decent counter to levelers. So, both players diversifying their armies pretty well here. And uh, Teddy has really just kind of built the uh, Maginot line here from north to south. He's kind of got a line of defenses all the yeah. way across the map. But also with huge gaps in it also, but yeah. obviously he's probably not finished yet, but it's quite interesting. He's got a mine. He's, he's also got, got mines. Mine. Yeah. He's got a mine producer. That's really interesting because that's really useful. It is useful. And w we might see these mines come into play. He's walking in. So why did you drive it into him? Oh, he's just, just he's just missing them. Oh, my God. Uh, okay, he hit one there. Which mine did he choose? Any light mines. He should have gone for medium. Yeah, light mines, maybe not, not enough for uh, raiders. Medium mines would have been better. But well, that, uh, that defense worked out. That defense held him off. Maybe it always come back again, but that was a good start. That's what you want defense to do, really, in a lot of ways. You just want it to keep keep him occupied, keep it enough time so you can react to it. So that defense was doing fine. He's coming for it. I'll send that comment. 
get the gun knife. Yeah, so uh, Teddy's commander has to be careful. It only takes um, a small group of raiders to kill you, as we've seen in previous games. But uh, Teddy doing a really good job here of defending. And uh, let's see what the players are doing in their bases here. P-Tac just on the one vehicle plant. And uh, Teddy building air now. So he is going blade wings. And uh, this could be a game changer. I don't see many... I mean, there are a couple anti-air towers. That might be all, all he needs to defend uh, against these blade wings. But uh, in terms of eco, P-Tac has 50 metal per second. Wow, he's got a slasher, which is very unusual. Yeah. He's got a big tank army there, but I think... Here comes those blade wings. They are moving to the front line or near the front line. And uh, P-Tac with a massive army of raiders here. Uh, as I've mentioned before, raiders are very good against static defense. They uh, simply can tank a lot of hits and do decent damage and they shoot in an arc, which will kind of uh, fly over dragon's teeth and wrecks. Comms there. Yeah, p -Tech being very aggressive with his comm, and Teddy might Let get caught out here. He does cloak. Good D-gun there, but oh, there's just not enough D-guns in the world, and uh, Teddy will Teddy will die. So, uh, very well played by both players, but uh, p -Tech taking the middle of the map early with his commander um, seemed to give him an advantage. Let's see. Both players going core again, but this time both players going K-Bots. Uh, so, what do you think about that? Why why would they go K-Bots this time? What do you think? It's interesting that well, they've both done that. Yeah. Um, I mean, may, maybe just probably, mixing it up, playing mind games? What do you think? That's very interesting, obviously, because how would they know what their opponent's choosing? And how would they know what to do. They've probably had lessons from the last match. They're like, oh, they're kind of familiarity with how they played last time. They assume their opponent is going to play the same style. Therefore, they're reacting to that, most probably. Um, K-Bots are fine. They've both gone core. They've both gone for AKs. Uh, a lot of AKs I can see on the build queue for P-Tac. And also, he's got some FUDs as well, so I can see what he's going to do. Um... They're both going to do very well. I think uh, at the moment, Teddy's going to do more AKs. We'll see how they expand. Um, I think it might be a mistake, actually, because this map is very good with uh, T1 tanks. So, I mean, if it was winning last time for P-Tac, I would have kept with it, really. You know you know what you're familiar with. But, no, the, the, we'll see how it turns out. The, they're both, it's interesting they've both chosen the same types of units, so that'll be a nice start for both of them. Yeah, it's almost like they're reading each other's minds. Uh, both they are. They yeah. are similar to each other. Even they do play similar to each other. That's why it's quite an interesting matchup. I don't know why, but they do. Obviously, a, a certain a good level of player, they've got a certain mindset. But um, yeah, so. And you can see they've played differently as well. They're sending out lots of T1s. They're not putting LLTs everywhere because they've got AKs now to kind of cover the map. There's a lot of a uh, lot of area to cover, so they can cover that with AKs, hopefully. Um, and he's got FUDs coming out already, which are quite expensive. And then I wonder what he's going to do with those FUDs because that, that's quite an interesting thing to do. They're slow. They take ages to walk across the map. Um, they are good, though. They're really good, so... No, Thuds are, yeah, it's a really interesting unit. Uh, very good against defenses, like static defense, and uh, yep. clumps of units as well. They're, they're decent against AKs, uh, but the AKs can, of course, kind of micro out of their, uh, their shells. So uh, once again, P-Tac taking a very aggressive approach, moving his commander out onto the map super early. 
And um, is Teddy just that. kind of playing more defensive. His commander's still in, still in the base. He's going straight for the base, which is really clever. With those three fuds, I believe he's doing that. And then if he ke keeps on going forward a bit, as far as he can to hold the line, yeah, that'd be quite clever because you've got to always consider them. Those fuds can go right through our teeth. He's got some AKs to cover them as well. So that's a nice little army. Um, we'll see. Teddy's got his army though, so you can see he's kind of waiting. Yeah, moving forward with these studs. Now these studs will outrange AKs. But as you can see, he's already getting some uh, long-range harassment. They uh, now the thuds. Do they outrange LLTs? I believe they do, right? Um, I don't think so. They're they're definitely in range. They're not like Rocco's. They, they, they do. They do. They bear. I think they, they barely, do. yeah, barely outrange them. Look, he's chipping away at them. Yeah. If he if he micros really well, Teddy with his AKs, he can miss all those shots because what you need with thuds, you need critical mass. You need enough thuds that they're shooting enough. Yeah. Enough. To hit the AKs because they're much stronger. They're so much stronger, better, they're better units, really. But if you micro really well, and what I would recommend is that he tries to keep those fud that fud is keep on keeps on adding more fuds to it. He needs to chip away at that fuds. This is a good opportunity. I'll try and take out one or two of them. I'll go after those because you don't want that critical mass of fud of, of uh, the army. You want to use your AKs almost like a skirmish. Yeah, go on, move them around, go around, yeah, and keep on running. Why not? If he's going to listen. He might ignore it, but I'd I'd keep on going. I don't know yet. See if they react to that. I don't think he will though, but Oh he's got fuds also now. They tell he's got fuds, so he's reacted that way. They're like twins. Yeah, they <laughs> really like... do play so similarly. <laughs> They're very good together though. That's the that's actually a great uh you know, benefit. That's a really great energy to be able to actually you know, have a good play. They're not they're, they're not identical actually, but it's so, interesting. Yeah. They, they play very similar in a one v one. So, yeah, Teddy was moving his AKs in the right direction, and it looked like he was about to take out uh, these metal extractors. He will take this one out. I think. Okay, he does get it. And he might get the second one here. So, yeah, here in the, uh, the north of the map, we have Thud Wars. And uh, both players just kind of mirroring each other, building the same units, but uh, p -Tech might have slightly more thuds. He's got his common to look after him as well. So he's going to be... Teddy's got to be careful gonna... moving his commander into an LLT. He does degun it, but there's another LLT there. He's going after him. P-Tac moving south now. Or is he going to try to go for the comm snipe? That's a lot of thuds, but uh, the truth is Teddy has his own thuds. And they are moving down from the north. So... Thud is a very positional unit. They need to be positioned correctly. Oh, look, he's going too far in, surely. Look, yeah. he's got to run away. It's too late. He's, got, he's caught him out, really. That's yeah. quite interesting. He, he went, he uh, maybe took a bridge too far there. He's fine. He's going back now, so that's fine. Yeah. But p just has more now. He's just got more. And that's so dangerous to deal with, honestly. If I was, if I was telling you, I'd chuck my comet to the front as well. You need that extra help at this moment. Uh, he's got enough though. I wouldn't... He obviously built some LRTs of course, just uh, but they can be chipped away easily uh, by floods. It's very difficult to know what to do, but well, like I say, he's, he's got units now. He's building AKs. He's doing fine. He's doing okay. He just needs a bit of time just to group together and have a bit of a... keep his army close to... He should be following... Pitak's army really because Pitak look at that big army just right in the middle where's he going is he going to go around well, I, I don't think he quite knows yet but he yeah. might even just Pitak's having a hard time deciding what he wants to do here he, he has there the he better is. army he just needs to make a decision about what he wants to do with it 
those AK, AKs going, that's perfect, because look, he can see those. He's reacting, he's running all these army all the way back. But he's going to get those mech spots, so this is a great opportunity for Teddy. Yeah. It, this is great for him. It's taking a bit of time, though, unfortunately, so he's got some AK yeah. support. But if he spreads those out, he can definitely get those mechs in. Yeah. Right? Which direction? So Teddy is moving in with this small group of AKs on the west, but uh, p -Tech has enough thuds here to probably take out all these defenses. Maybe he doesn't know how many more units he has. He's not aware that he that he has such a critical mass of thuds. And uh, if he would just get them all into position, he could easily take out these light laser towers, but maybe he just doesn't know. Uh, in the meantime, Teddy has taken out a couple metal extractors here in the west. But uh, p oh really, he could just move these in, take out this entire little expansion base there. Wow. It's interesting because that p has gone to uh, vehicles now, so that's perfect. So it's shaping up a bit better. No, sorry, Teddy is, but... Um, p moving his army around. I think he wants to go, this is where the front line is, concentrate on this, but I don't think he's paying attention. I don't think the army being there is that beneficial because, look, he's just sort of waiting and then Teddy's going around. Yeah, so p -Tech, uh He's car parking, see? 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 So he's not doing that well. He's going in now. Okay, so he is going in with all these thuds, and he could snipe Teddy's comp. Teddy's not paying attention here. Wow. Oh, Teddy, what are you doing? You need to back up. p -tech. Oh, that's chasing. No way. He's microing left and right. He's microing. Microing his little heart out. And man, thuds are not that accurate. Oh, oh. could he do it? Yeah, he does. Wow, wow. that was impressive. Oh, the attack actually won. Yeah, he holy, did. Holy, holy. So, guys, if you are just now joining, this is the Balance Annihilation Crown Cup 3. We are in the grand finals. It is p -Tech versus Cartouche. This is a best of seven. p -Tech saying no fleas. Cartouche and p -Tech have agreed no fleas. <laughs> so, if I see any fleas, I'm going to ask Ares to ban the offending player, and uh, I will... Expect him to take that seriously. Uh, Cartouche has won every set, so he is in the winner side of the grand final. So he he will start one game up. So that means Cartouche has to win three more games in order to win the tournament. P Tech has to win I mean, four games. And if I understand correctly, they've already played a best of three, which. Cartouche won, yeah. um, I think that's right. Yeah, that's right. Cartouche and P-Tac played a best of three, and Cartouche went two owed him, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So That's his style. Cartouche starting here in this glorious orange with his crown. He is the undefeated champion. And uh, going core. And... P Tech here, also core. And uh, similar starts, it seems. Cartouche is going K bots. So. Uh, and we've got a three max start from Peter. So yeah, P Tech going for that greedier. Start, but more resource. Kind of a greedier <laughs> start. Well, he did say, he said, oh, no fleas. And he agreed to it. So I don't know if you can take someone's word for it. That's a gentleman's agreement. There's no, there's no rules for that. Um. So that's he's so he's just going for free mixes like he did last time. Because you think, oh, he wouldn't do that again, surely. He lost, didn't he? Quite badly in that sense. He could have he could have won. But um no fair play. Yeah, so P Tech going for a very slow start. He still hasn't built his first lab. He is now finally building a plant at uh, about a minute thirty seconds. So uh going vehicles first, that's an interesting choice. Um he may or may not know that Cartouche has also gone core. So vehicle against core is probably better. And uh, they did agree not yeah. to build fleas. So, uh, But we're seeing weasels come out of p -Tuck. It looks like Cartouche has start his assumed there won't be any rushes coming from p -Tuck, So Yeah. Um, yeah, both players with a slower start, certainly slower than we've seen in the past. And uh, 
Yeah, like I said, pretty normal start by both players, but uh, the main difference is that Cartouche has gone K-Bots and p has gone Vehicles. And what do you guys think? What, what's better on this map? You know, what, what, do, you, do you favor core vehicles or core K-Bots? Um, for core, I'll choose vehicles. Um, I prefer K-Bots when I choose arm. Vehicles is standardized here, bro. Vehicles is stronger than K-Bots. Yeah. But it's only plan, only if you use them well, yeah. Only if you use them the right way. Uh, Once you spam them gators, man, those AKs don't have a chance. I'm telling you. Yeah. yeah. Gators are definitely better in a straight fight than AKs. They just have more health and do more damage. And they're they have better yeah. range. Well, yeah. Same it's range, I think. to put out enough K-Bots to deal with um, vehicles because of the higher energy cost of K-Bots. Um, you find yourself losing a lot of build power on just building solar collectors. And there's an abundance of metal on this map anyway, so... Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree with you. And I, I think vehicles are better um, on Comet Catcher, but... That's just me. Wonder, the does reason look... people start K-Watts, it's quicker. Yeah. That's the only reason. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I I just start K-Watts and then transition pretty quickly over to vehicles. I wonder I wonder if Carti should be pretty upset that um P Tax used these weasels, which are almost like almost like fleas, really. So I don't know, because he hasn't built any LTs or any. Now he has. But I wonder if he he didn't like that. Because uh, you know, he hasn't done anything like that. Look, he's coming on the other side as well. Look at Cartouche's base. Look. Master bro, how do you think this game will go? What's your thoughts? Master Bell, um, Adel Master thinks Master. that Adel thinks that Cartouche is going to win. But what, what's your opinion? Who, who do you think is going to it has the better opportunity here. I would say Cartouche just because he just wins every game. Um, I can't say I understand how though. I can't understand either. But look at this. So you say this this star. He's got he's got AKs. He's got the the weaker unit. P Tat's got a great star. This is the start he wanted. You know, this is he's more set up. He's, he's a good more, start. Yeah, he's got a great start. So this is a great matchup already. Yeah, so yeah, this is going to be more. We we'll see, we we'll see. You know, people get rattled if you attack him really early. Obviously, it, it really blows apart their plans sometimes. So this is really nice to see that. Mm -hmm. uh, Cartouche okay. sent his come straight to the mid. So like the pro. In terms of the eco, it's pretty balanced. Um, so yeah, Cartouche. Now this is interesting because in the in the game between uh, P Tac and Teddy. P-Tac was the one moving his commander out to the middle really quickly, and Teddy was keeping his commander in the base. But this game, Cartouche oh my God. has moved out to the middle with his commander, and uh, P-Tac <laughs> has kept his commander in the base. So Cartouche definitely being more aggressive with his commander, kind of moving him out on the map. And uh, Tiger got, got a good start, man. The expansion is nice. Could that make a difference? If uh, if Cartouche can lock down the middle of the map, that would be a nice advantage early on. Yeah, but Gators, they could easily like go to the side, so they're good at kill yeah. expansions. Yeah, Gators can definitely maneuver around the uh, the defense. And uh, certainly p -Tac has quite a few of them at this point. He is moving down the eastern side of the map, as you can see here. I'll zoom out. And there are gators moving down the east. And uh, all Cartouche has is this one light laser tower to defend that. He is moving some AKs down the east side. But... Uh, he's putting up more parts also. Yeah. Cartouche moving his own AK raiding force uh, into the south. It. it stopped for a moment, so I think he's gonna. P Tats gonna have an opportunity to deal with that. It's not very good to leave an army just waiting there. He's probably forgotten about it. He's always being attacked, isn't he? 
Oh, he's reacted, so he's like, lost two T1 constructors. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot of AKs. But uh, as we said before, gators are generally stronger in a direct engagement. So uh, P-Tech getting some harassment done here. He did take out this little expansion at the top right and is now working on another little expansion. And Cartouche is reacting, but uh, as you guys said earlier, it does feel like vehicles will have an advantage on a map like this, just in terms of the ability to get around and Cartouche being very aggressive with his commander. He's kind of moving him almost into enemy lines here. What's going to stop him? That LRT maybe? I maybe. think he's going to dig on it. He's going for it. I mean, gonna... he is now oh, in the range. He's a close one. I think. That's clever. He's oh my god. Close. He's going to get cool out. Very ballsy. Very he'll, ballsy. Look at, look at the D. Oh. I wouldn't engage. I wouldn't wait. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it quite yet. Because... Uh, Unfortunately, it looks good, but yeah, very ballsy there, and uh, he is very far forward. Kind of, he's putting to keep on going. He has just made a straight line down the map. You can kind of see he's just walked from his base all the way down to Ptac's side of the map. Looks like Ptac's oh, trying to man. Stay calm now. It's like got this, dude. I think he has this. This is his chance. Those gators are freaking good, man. Strong. Yeah, Ooh. it's risky though. If he if he uses all those gators for an all-in, he might just lose the game if it doesn't work. That's what happened in the game before. He has to go all in. He has to go all in now before it's too late. Wow. Well, no, he doesn't. I mean, the game's pretty that. even. There's no reason for him to uh, make a risk. No, because he's pushing too far. If you leave him there, you don't go all in. You have to no stop. Because he's gonna go. Okay, he's here, here we go. Oh no, that's... it'd be fine. Uh, Could he oh, get shit, him? He's thirty percent. Thirty percent. Oh man, that was a trap. It yes. was a trap. He baited him. Yeah, it's a honey pot. It was. Exactly. Yeah, that was exactly why I said Peter should have gone for this round. Because what he did is he came in a, for a line, so basically two D guns took out the entire army. Now, uh, P-Tac is not out of this yet. He still has a better eco, uh, but he he's struggling to use his metal. Uh, he's building raiders now. Raiders better, probably, against this kind of uh, he, LLT he, spam. He can't, he can't keep on chucking away his armies like that, though. Yeah. That's what he did last time. That's, yeah. He shouldn't do that. Yeah. I know you need to try. I wouldn't have gone in. I wouldn't have said that's good enough, because look at all the LLTs. Cartouche is no fool. He's good with the D-gun. Yeah. Like, your gators are slow. You can D-gun them easily. The com can handle them. I mean, he, he, he's baiting him, right? Like, he's doing that on purpose. He, you know, he's like, he's putting himself out there like a, like a three-course meal. You know, like, oh, don't I look delicious? Yeah. And then, you know, he goes in and yeah. try, tries to and get him, and he just, he just D-guns all of the gators, so... Very, very funny, uh, very interesting play, but it isn't over. I mean, the game is not over. p -Tac still in this. He still has if, the better if eco. I was, if I was p -Tac, I'd send my com up as well. I'd see cartouche has gone. I'd just chuck my com in there as well. That would have won it. I yeah. would be all right. He said he's coming right to the front. I'll send it to, right to the front. We're, we're, let's go right. I'd send him in with my more units, um, but that's no, fine. It's still open. Now, levelers are a great choice here. Levelers against AKs. It's oh, there's going to be a good one right here. Oh. Okay. p don't, be fine. don't do it again. We've don't got... waste another group of units on this. Yeah, and a Cartouche wings. now with blade wings. He has transitioned to air. These blade wings could paralyze. He's going to try in. Everything. Okay, the blade wings do come in. p has already built a missile truck. He, I think, expected this. And uh, Cartouche now moving through with AKs. p -Tac needs to build a defender with his commander. He's building a light laser tower. Uh-oh. It's funny, because how quickly it turns, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> now Cartouche is winning, or oh, he's on the attack. Look at this. 
He's got the blade wing, so that'll take a long time to sort of... But uh, if you look at the side of the map it. here, p Tank's doing a great job of taking the peripheries. Uh, of course, he's got this one comm in the top left, just kind of AFK, but... He is doing a good job uh. of expanding out here. And, uh... Apex just lost the resource advantage, so... Cartouche yeah, moving oh. in with some AKs to the right side, to the east. It's a lot of AKs. p -Tech desperately attempting to uh, stop this push, but uh, Raiders are kind of slow. Go for the comm. I wouldn't chase after him. Go for the comm. I mean, you know, uh, he's got a kind of enough fight unit there. He's got fuds. He's got all Fair enough. I know what he's trying to, you know, the medium term. Now he's broken away from the chase because he knows it's a fool's errand for the time right. being. Okay, he is now moving his comm in, uh, or to the front line at least, building a radar. I think that, yeah, that radar might help a lot. But, uh, yeah, Car is. Car Cartouche has really damaged his eco with that, look, look, look. with that raid. Oh my god, here we go. Is he Nice. P-Tac going for the, uh, potentially going for the snipe here. He's got a lot He's of Raiders. He's gonna take away the defenses, yeah, but... Um... Now, Raiders are much better against defense than Instigators, and they should be able to take out this LLT line fairly easily. He's completely ignored those AKs in the yeah. south, though, hasn't he? So this is... Cartouche is just loving this, but... Very difficult. He's, look, it's, it's between two minds, isn't he? So one moment he was chasing after him, then he was going for the comm, but he didn't. And then he's gone, now he's chasing them back again, so he's yeah. looking at him. Yeah. <laughs> P-Tac really struggling to decide what he wants to do here. Um, it's, be it's because of the honeypot in the start, he lost the... That's the thing, you got to look after your army. You can't just chuck it away. Like You need to have something exactly, to yeah. move around. If he had had those gators, even that, he could have chased down those AKs and actually stopped those easy. But he went for the honey pot, Cartouche got him in, and then Cartouche got, got on top, really. So, fair play. Well played. Yeah, it really feels like Cartouche just outplayed him here. Really just kind of mind yeah, gamed yeah. him. First, he baited him into that all in against his calm. And then, uh, and then that didn't work. And then he kind of baited his army to ch chase the AKs around. That didn't really work. Uh, uh, he's out of these moments. He was outplaying him, outsmarting him. Yeah. What a great strategy. And do you see, though, like he's running away, he's defending himself. He's got his comm there. Um, p -Tab was doing some interesting things. He was definitely taking out a lot of these, uh, he's doing, you know, going around the sides and stuff. But, um, yeah, no, it's really good. Yeah. I mean, p -Tab has had, in this game, he's had the army to kill. Cartouche's calm. Um, he could go after it. He could it go right, right now. There. Yeah, if he knew he was there. He's seen him. Okay. He's seen him. This could be Send it. This could be it. Send your tanks. You gotta just try it. Oh, he's, he's got to try it. Another, is this another honey pot or what? Is this? Dude, I mean, this is such a dead 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 it feels like too. a bait, but he's got fuds going after him. That's pretty dangerous. He can't slow down. He needs to go. Oh. He's, He's got to decide if he man. wants to do this or not. Carry now, on. if on. only Blade Wings could paralyze comms, you know, that would be so much... <laughs> that would be so good for him right here. Look, it's constructed slowed it down. Oh my god. Nah, oh no. Alright, he is, he is kind of him. surrounding him, but these Blade Wings are paralyzing all the instigators. Oh shit, he has no energy. He has no energy, that was yeah. the best time, no fighters. It was another bait. Yeah. It was just another bait. I don't think. Yeah, that's a bait. Yeah. It would have been far better for Peter to take this expansion in the bottom right from Cartouche. Man, Cartouche. That's naked. Outplaying again. Cartouche just so good at getting into his opponent's head and forcing him to make bad plays. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? Yeah, it's uh, incredible, really. And now he's got a whole field of metal, and he's got these rectors or these necros resurrecting. Every oh, I guess he's just reclaiming. Either way, he's getting metal. Three thousand and growing. 
So he should he should have gone after Cartouche's Mexes at the top. No, he should have gone right past it, ignored the com, gone for the Mex, just as Cartouche did in a certain just earlier. Um, yeah, what is doing now in the bottom right? Yeah, but he's got to be careful because. Uh... Master Bell, you still think Cartouche is gonna win? Um, I have no idea, to be honest, except that card wins. I have no idea, but except that card wins. This game's can okay, change got so it. fast as we saw earlier on, so who knows. Yeah, this is this is looking bad for uh, for PTAC, and uh, I don't really know what he can do from here. Uh, Cartouche is set were to be expand again, because um, he's just left that behind. He's also got a lot of reclaim he can get, and then just kind of hold it, put put down a little bit of uh, just enough defense that the raid stop, and then he can and then he can think about his next step there. Yeah, yeah. Cartouche is though uh, feels like he's way ahead. At this point, he's ahead on Eco. Mm. He's got a bigger army. He's got better map control. And uh, P Tank struggling to hold on here. I think. Probably trying to think of something he can do from this position. But uh, yeah, Cartouche's army just superior at this point. And uh, P-Tac moving a construction vehicle into light laser tires, probably not what he wants to do. Cartouche building a light laser tower or a uh, exploiter on uh, P-Tac's metal spot here. He's going for it. Look, he's going right through the middle. He is so, and that cool Cartouche out really. So. Yeah. That's fine. Just keep on going. Keep going. Take but, a risk, although it's a bit late now. Yeah, Cartouche with harassment down the west now. And uh, P-Tac. Not a lot though. He could, yeah, he's going. He's doing what I said he should be doing. That's it. Yeah, carry on. Go in. Yeah. yeah, no. Keep on straight up. Just, just walk through the middle here. Battle of the Bulge. Yeah, just, just move all of his stuff down the middle. Sometimes I think players wish, like, oh, God, please run that way, like, they just ignore it, as they think it'll just go away, but it won't, it won't go away. He's gone the wrong way, he's gone straight for the base, which is probably not the right thing to do, I would've gone straight for the bases. Can, can he go for the commander a third time this oh, game? The, the third no. snipe attempt? But no, these blade wings they are... Did. Yeah, these blade wings are just gonna... And with that, I, I feel that uh, P-Tech may just... May just give up here. Yeah, he does. GG. Nice job. GG. In that first game, Cartouche styling on P-Tech. I don't know what else to say. Just absolutely um, felt like he was in P-Tech's head. It wasn't even necessarily a game of mechanical skill, as uh, P-Tech's APM has been higher throughout that first game throughout this tournament, but uh, Cartouche just making better decisions. And uh, let's introduce the players. Uh, P-Tech going arm this time. And uh, K-Bot Lab first. He is going super early K-Bot Lab, just building one mechs and straight into K-Bot Lab. Well, one mechs and a solar collector. And uh, Cartouche, same start, also going arm. Straight into a K-Bot lab. So what do you guys think? Like, why uh, why did they both go arm here into K-Bots? What do you think? Flea Rush. Flea it's Rush? It's quicker. You'll get... Oh, yeah, you'll get the mechs faster. I mean, you'll kill it faster and you can expand from there. Both together. Both gonna miss out on each other. <laughs> Run past each other. Yeah, they both players just oh, kind she's of gonna mirroring hurt each other. Right yeah, but Patek has an advantage because the commander is still in his base. Well, Cart doesn't have any fleas. Yeah, if 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 he gets Cart's first max, it's over. I think Cart's gonna like resign. Ah, oh, uh, okay. he messed up. 
he was he slowed down. Okay, so he needs to kill that leaf first. Cartouche uh, almost gets this mix. Oh no. But not quite. And then down here, guys, there's action happening on both sides. This flea harassment early on. Wow, he did alright, P Tank. P Tank does right. take out this K bot. So, uh. He did nice. well. Go, go, go. Thanks, Tank. I will resign now. He'll resign now. Cart will resign right now. No way. Okay. Yeah, that's. He will watch. You, you keep saying that, and then it never happens. You keep saying game <laughs> over, and then it never actually is over. Guys, come on. Dude, usually he now. would resign this time. But Cartouche is moving his commander back. p -tack with this relentless flea harassment. He is successfully taken out. Construction K-Bot, Metal Extractor, and a Solar. p -tack Oh, he lived. Absolutely. Styling on Cartouche, certainly. After that first game, probably feels he has something to prove. He needs revenge. He needs to this show great the world stuff. that... Uh, he can dethrone the king here. The king with his crown. Well, he's had an excellent start. I think uh, yeah. if he carries on, he's doing great. So Could have done a little bit better, maybe. A little bit better. But, I mean, you can, you can kill the fleas when they're being built. But, nah, fair enough. Fair play, he's doing really well. No, that was a, it was a great start from P-Tac. He played it really well. He uh, forced Cartouche, who likes to be aggressive with his commander. I mean, kind of moving out onto the map. He forced him to come back to his base. Waste a lot of time. And uh, at this point, Cartouche doesn't even have a con. He doesn't have a single con. And uh, P-Tac has two. P-Tac moving out onto the map, and both players sending another wave of fleas at each other. Here we go. Cartouche. Uh, well, he's moving back now. I don't know what he's doing. P-Tac moving his fleas in, but uh, Cartouche right. has built a light laser tower this time. That's clever. Look, he got he caught out the solo. That was very clever. Cartouche can't do a lot. For some reason it's not hurting it too much, but it's doing fine. Well, when it's closed, it has a lot more armor. Okay, here we go. Cartouche moving into p -Tac's base. Ah! And uh, looking like he might be uh, successful here, killing oh, these solars. So Is that an e-stool that he's got? That's terrible. He does have some uh, peewees now. Those should, should be able to uh, curtail this aggression, but... Uh, yeah, as the spectators are pointing out, God, this is uh, this is Come a good on. place to oh. attack for Teddy. It would be a great uh, a great target there if he can uh, move some fleas or peewees into this expo that has no defense. Uh, but uh, no, this game is still pretty even. Both players have done significant economic damage with their raids. And uh, yeah. now the players are pretty even on eco. Both of the players wouldn't have, would not have, had, have enjoyed that. They wouldn't have liked that at all because uh, they're doing so well. Pitat was doing great. And obviously Cartouche came back, killed three solos of uh, p -Tac just when he needed him but they're, they're both doing fine now it's, it's it's they did really well a blow for a blow really yeah they they really have done a really uh good job kind of keeping even you know punishing their opponents but but again cartouche has this undefended expansion and uh will p -Tac see it will p -Tac find it he does he does find stay, it stay with fleas Fair play to him. And uh, Cartouche not using his commander, he, he definitely needs to keep his commander moving. Keep him, uh, keep him building or expanding or using him somehow. Yeah. And uh, P Tech starting to pull ahead on Eco. He is now up about double metal production.
P-Tech continuing to uh, attempt harassment with these Peewees, but uh, not too successful there. And, uh, yeah, both the commanders in the near the, the center of the map here. But uh, I think it's P Tech just has more cons out on the map expanding. He's got one here in the south, one in the north, and his commander expanding. So he is expanding in three different directions. And at this point, uh, Cartouche only expanding in two directions one with his commander and one with this con. So uh, in the long run, P Tech should get an advantage. Of course, uh, here at the top of the map, there are a few fleas. Just uh, sitting there, maybe waiting for the opportune moment. Oh. Hmm. He's got the fleas at the north there. It's good that he saw them. Yeah, these fleas at the north. Going to try to get something done, but uh, P-Tech does have radar. And uh, moving down the map with some fleas here. Might be able to get this metal extractor. And uh, might be able to get the con. That would be huge. Oh, just, just barely can't get him. The two commanders are right near to each other. They're, they're just past the hill. Yeah. So he's gonna go and degun. That's good. Okay. Yeah. The honey pot is reversed now. Yeah. Uh -oh. Tactically moving no. in here with his calm. He's got to be careful because Cartouche could certainly surround oh, him. Right. That is crazy. Look, he's just sat right there. He's just millimeters yeah. away. I, that's a bit close. No, PTAC really giving no shits. Uh, moving his commander in very aggressively. And uh, throwing up these LLTs, but uh, he's got to be careful. Cartouche really could easily careful. surround him here. He's ca yeah, I think I'll pull back a bit if I was him. Oh yeah, he's uh, he's he's playing this very. Oh. He's he's living life on the edge. I respect it, but uh, that's more like it. He's going to come for him. He has to always keep it on his comm. If you got your comm right at the front. Oh, there, here we go. It. Here we go. Oh my god, this is so scary. You cannot look away at this moment. I'm getting anxiety just watching this. Aries, will you pay for my therapy? <laughs> this is scary. And uh, P-Tech desperately throwing up light laser towers. I'm loving this, though, because now, at the moment, P-Tech's the honeypot, allegedly. I wonder if Cartouche will fall for it. It's very alluring. It's like very tempting to try it. Look at that trap box. Yeah, no. <gasps> look, the comms right there. Cartouche speaks come right oh behind. Oh my god, what is like, happening? Okay, so now Cartouche is in the back line here. Send, send your comm in. Uh-oh. We call this the commando <laughs> comm. He's got the comm in the back building LLTs. Uh-oh, he's going for it now. Okay. Probably not a good idea. Will this be another oh, game oh, where oh. P-Tech uh, sends endless uh, units to, bad. to just feed Cartouche's commander? <laughs> okay, now I can say good game, right? Or it's too, it's too soon. <laughs> God, he's reclaiming. He's got an army oh right off. Oh my God, P-Tac in trouble. P-Tac. GG, man. He's going to have to have good D-guns here. He's moving. He has, to, he has to run to that LLT, but that's not going to help for too long. He's trapped. He's, he's actually been... Good Lord. He is trapped. He's been... Yeah. He's encircled by him. Trap, trap. Uh oh Wow. Unbelievable. And once again, Cartouche just getting into p head and really just kind of outplaying him. I mean... Might even go air again, because it's hard to get across to the map, so it'll take ages to get across, yeah. we'll see. Now, thuds, thuds are really good on this map, just because of the elevation. Just the way it's designed. Uh, thuds are pretty popular. And, uh... We do have Cartouche now on game point. It is a best of seven. So Cartouche had one game coming into this because he was in the winner's side of the grand finals. 
and he's won two games, so he is now three games up. He just needs one game to win, and his opponent, uh, P Tech here, he has to win four games in a row. Good lord, that is a challenge against Cartouche. He's pl he's playing life on hard mode here. And uh, Cartouche deciding to go vehicle first. That's an interesting choice. Uh, yeah. Cartouche going vehicle and P-Tech going K-Bot. That wind's not very good. Yeah, wind on this map. Not the most They're reliable. Both. Yeah, go ahead. They're both gone wind. They're both gone wind. They should have gone one solar probably. That would have helped a lot. You're yeah, right, yeah, one it. solar or it's uh solars, those reliable that reliable energy. I think he's got plenty of metal as well. Oh he's got a unit there already. But he's defended now, so And uh Cartouche with this Moving out with his commander as usual, building an LLT on the ramp. Not a bad idea. This will prevent uh, most harassment early on. So both players with a pretty standard start. Nothing, uh, nothing too out out of the ordinary. Um, nothing crazy. Like I've seen air starts on this map. No, no player deciding to go air first or anything like that. But uh, they have. Go ahead. They have set up differently, haven't they? So obviously, uh, P Tax he's gone K Bot, which I I would say is the better idea. That's what I, that's what I would choose. But then obviously Cartouche, he's gone for vehicles. So it'd be interesting to see if the if he actually works out. The Instigator, the Gators, they do well. They they work really well on Comet Catcher Redux because it's a very flat map. Yeah, this does have levels to it, and there's a lot a lot of terrain to to go through, and there's lots of um. Uh, sort of choke point, so it's not as easy for gators anymore. So, we'll see. I'll do what Cartouche is doing. They, yeah, go right to there, right to the choke point. If you're in a choke point, you can degun anything. If you've got enough energy, you can degun. You can sit right in that choke point and degun anything that comes at you because they don't, they can't move around you so easily. But um, it'd be interesting to see uh, if PTAC takes his com out of his base, which he has done, um, and where he sends it. Yeah, I feel that on this map. Um, I, I prefer, I, I think Cartouche is playing it better. I think uh, moving out early and establishing control of the mid is so important because you have these, you know, if you can block off these two kind of middle entrances, yep. then you just get such a massive advantage in map control. You know, the player that holds mid on this map usually has a big advantage. And... Uh, Cartouche has already taken his side and I'm assuming is going to move to the right side there and do the same thing on p side and then once he does that should be able to uh, build some LLTs. Now there is a single AK moving uh, into Cartouche's base but uh, Cartouche has built that light laser tower so um, I really feel like Cartouche is just playing this map better at this point. I like that he's been aggressive. He's kind of taking the the mid here. And once you get control of this mid, it becomes very hard to maneuver around. I mean, you still can go through the sides, but it just takes a lot longer to get around the map. Yep. And then once you have control of the mid, you can, uh, I mean, you have a lot of options. You could, uh, you know, build a lab or you could build... Uh, you know, defenses, you could kind of slowly creep into your, you could build punishers or guardians, you know, and, and just kind of shell your opponent's base. I mean, you have a lot of options from the mid. Yeah. And he's got both sides of it as well, which I'm surprised by. Yeah. I know, uh, he's actually put some levelers there. That'd be interesting. But, uh, he's got some fuds. P Tag is now fighting for the mid. He, he has brought his calm down. And a little skirmish going on here on the right side. Uh, Cartouche will take out Ptax Khan there. But, um, yeah, really, Cartouche pulling the uh, pulling the noose around Ptax here is putting him in a really bad position. Um, 
He's got his comm right near to him. Yeah, their comms are really close, and PTAC struggling on metal. Certainly, Cartouche ahead because he just has taken better map control here. He's just got more uh, more metal spots, more surface area, and uh, so now they are fighting oh. for this eastern side. So PTAC has managed to get the uh, the HLLT up here, and that will at least stop some aggression for the moment. And now PTAC moving his commander west to uh, potentially take the left side. But uh, Cartouche does have quite a few instigators here. He's just getting the radar up. I see he's got to have one already, but he's got to be really careful with his base. And uh, Cartouche moving his commander around, he probably has now seen that PTAC is creeping forward with light laser towers and does not want to let that happen. He's going free. Interesting. Yeah. PTAC moving forward here with uh, some K-Bots. He does have this single Rocco. A couple of thuds. And uh, PTAC moving his commander into an LLT here. He's got to be careful. His commander now lower than half health. He's got to be really careful. Yeah, wow. that's dangerous. That's quite... The way it worked out for him. But you've got to be careful because uh, Cartouche's comm is right there with full health. He's going back in again. Oh, he's oh, going to you've got it. You, No. You can't do this. This is the alleyway. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Health, he's he's already at like a third. He's at 30, 33%. Anything that comes at me can degun if he's got enough energy, but he's got to be careful. Here comes the air. Uh oh. Okay, so Cartouche has built a bomber. And, uh. Oh man. P Tech didn't have a single defender. Oh, these bombing runs could absolutely be brutal. And, uh, P Tech now moving in. But, uh. Oh my god, he's gonna try to kill the calm. But once again, P Tech goes for the snipe and gets punished. How many times is he going to do it? Um, <laughs> yeah, it feels like every game Cartouche has baited PTAC like this to uh, try, try to kill his commander, and then uh, and then it just it just ends badly. It just doesn't it just doesn't pan out. Uh, like Johannes said, uh, wasn't much left to do. It is true that Cartouche had put him into a pretty bad position with the bombing. He's uh, definitely hurt his eco. So, you still think it's LOH T2, Ponzi? Uh, unfortunately not, no. I don't think so, no. <laughs> it's gonna be a third spam, bro. I know it's gonna be transitioned to a third spam. He's still got bombers to deal with, though. They have T1 bombers and Cartoon sitting around the base. He's just taking out the mexes slowly, effectively, without yeah, any... Yeah, that hurts, man. I know, that's... Yeah, that yeah. does hurt. Painful. And the PTAC checks all his army all the time. I wonder if Katsu should just go for him now. Yeah, it does. It does feel like Cartouche in a commanding position here, really making it difficult for PTAC to uh, come back into this game or do anything. Moving forward with a lot of thuds and uh, 
Doesn't even seem as though P-Tech has enough energy to run his light laser towers. That's never a good spot to be in. P-Tech has gone to air. He's reclaimed his lab and has now... He's totally committed to the bomber strategy. I don't know what he's trying to do with bombers. Maybe try to snipe? What, I mean, what do you guys think? Could he could he bomb Cartouche's commander? Would, would that... <laughs> is there any universe that that could work? He's reacting He's reacting to what Cartouche has done. But I think Cartouche should build their fighters now. So Cartouche has had his bombers. And he's very good at it. He'll just make three bombers. And then that's it. He'll switch to the, ne the next strategy. Yeah. And that's what he does. He switches quite cleverly. He doesn't stick with just that. He's not predictable like that, but he'll, he'll go on to the next phase. So the next phase, he's got a few fighters now, so he's protected. Um, but he's probably saw what Cartouche did, and he wants to do the same. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, I, I believe that bombers have a like a nerfed uh, damage versus commanders in BA. So it's not so easy to just snipe a commander with bombs uh, NBA it's, it's it's as far as cheese strats go <laughs> I don't have to say oh here we go the calm bomb yeah it just didn't work so uh guys cartouche is gonna take it cartouche nice. is going to uh, like I said, we won't lose a single game. that was impressive no t2 man and uh yeah cartouche Still the reigning champion. He, you know, he still has the crown that he deserves. Very impressive. Uh... Teddy wants to go now. Teddy wants to have a go, but that was really good. I enjoyed that. Uh, yeah. Cartouche, not rusty at all. I don't know how he does it. Here we go. In the front, we have Flash and Master Bell on the west side. So they've got some. Uh, Pretty experienced players on the front line here, kind of in this uh, aggressive land spam position. And on the east side, they have uh, Bunge Bob. Okay, so one of their lotus, lowest rated players starting here, and uh, Teddy, I think. Yeah. So. Interesting choice in terms of what players they put in the front there. The West team, I think, has uh, put put better players. The East team choosing to put uh, a 13-rated player in the front could be uh, could bite them in the end. Uh, Teddy, obviously, really good, but in a way, it feels like Teddy is going to be. Trying to carry the entire gulch portion of DSD for the Eastern team, and that's uh, quite quite an quite an ask. Yeah, I think that's a uh, very difficult thing to do. And uh, nobody has gone air first. Of course, going air first isn't unheard of on a map like this, but you could, of course, uh, go, you know, vehicle or K-Bot first and then reclaim your factory and go air. Certainly, you expect someone in these back positions to uh, build an aircraft plant sooner or later. But, uh, yeah, here at the moment... Very standard game, nothing nothing too out in the ordinary for DSD. Both teams just kind of uh, expanding out onto the map. And uh, as I say that, blue, so Smoke Dragon here, has gone for air first. I didn't see that, but he is the only player that started air that I can see. And he did uh, air transport his commander to the center. So, um... We'll have to see how that pays off. Blue smoke dragon here building a bomber. And uh, here at the center, 
We have, uh... We have Master Bell and Bunge Bob. Perhaps about to engage in fisticuffs with one another. Smoke Dragon picking up Orange's commander and moving him to the front line. If you just want to take a look at the map kind of at a glance here. Yeah, Goopy did point out that uh, Smoke Dragon did go air first. A little bit of uh, a battle of lasers here with the commanders, but uh, Master Bell moving forward with these storms, and these storms will, of course, effectively uh, destroy Bunchbob's defense. And I mean, this is what I was mentioning at the beginning of the cast. Or at the beginning of this game, rather. That uh, the East team choosing to put an inexperienced player in the Gulch. Potentially a fatal decision on their part because... Um, as you can see, Master Bell easily outplaying uh, the red player. Who just is probably less experienced. And uh, that will give the Western team a massive advantage in the Gulch. Uh, Command Commander Spice, so like the beige player, has moved down into the gulch as well to try to defend. Try to hold the position, but uh, Master Bell moving forward with his commander and uh, putting the Eastern team under some pressure. But, you know, as expected, we do have Teddy down here in the bottom. Uh, pushing forward. He will, however, meet Flash's Rockos. Flash, a very good player. And uh, Flash, with this Rocco spam, very good against LLTs. So, the Western team seems to be doing better in the early game, kind of uh, taking the southern part of the map pretty cons uh, effectively. And the problem is, I mean, uh, can the eastern team hold the south? Uh, we've seen how these games go. Typically, if one team controls the entire gulch early on, it is very difficult to uh, to come back from that, it's very difficult to, uh, for a team that has completely lost the gulch area of DSD to survive or to, uh, come back or hold on to the game. So, uh, we'll have to see Flash with a lot of aggression. It is, uh, Rocco's versus Samson's here. And, uh, Rocco's will, uh, easily win that engagement most of the time. So, uh, yeah, here in the south, the west team feels as though they're in a dominant position. And uh, Bell going to T2 here. And once he goes to T2, things will undoubtedly become significantly worse uh, for the eastern team. Uh, at the top, there are some skirmishes here. But uh, these battles at the uh, at the top of the map are much harder to. Uh, it's much more difficult to engage in combat because of the terrain. Pink with a bombing run. Kirimi Adolf going for that bombing run over Green's base. And, uh, getting some nanos. Uh-oh, someone paused the game. And, uh, Green, now with his own bombing run, moving into the center. I'm not sure what he wants. I'm not sure, I'm not sure what target p 
has in mind here. P-Tac going for Pink's base, it seems. And uh, he will take out... Uh, he, he really didn't do much there. Um, yeah, I don't think P-Tac... I don't think Tacky... I don't think he got as much accomplished as he wanted to. And... Uh, but then again, uh, Pink's bombing run over his base wasn't super effective either. Neither player took out even the energy storage. The problem really for the Eastern team is this bottom side of the map, this lower area. Uh, the Eastern team already in a lot of trouble. And now that... Uh, yeah, now that Master Bell is on T2, it is only going to get uh, progressively worse, I assume. Um, he's already queued up some Pyros and some Mortys. Pyros, very good against most T1 units. And uh, what can the, uh, the Eastern team do to survive here? Purple has sent down some flashes, and these will uh, push back Yellow's units for now. Um, yeah, so so for now, Kodiak kind of uh, keeping his team in the game, and uh, oh my god, is Flash going to get caught out here? Oh, he's getting low, 20%. Oh my god, oh my goodness, I don't think Flash expected that many Peewees. Holy cow, so Flash has lost his commander. Um, and that's huge, that is huge, because, um, yeah, they were, they were really kind of uh, putting the Eastern team into a terrible position there, and uh, Flash was kind of at the spearhead of, of that attack. But uh, now, now that Flash is dead, they will get his Calm Metal. And uh, it will be much harder to push forward uh, as the Eastern team. Now moving down with T2, they've got Pyros and Fidos in the back. So these players in the back, uh, in the, uh, the far eastern part of the map, have not been idle. They have been teching to T2. And that will allow perhaps the Eastern team to hold the Gulch. Uh, in the meantime, as, uh, as Goopy's saying in the chat, the Western team doing a good job of, uh, of holding or pushing forward in the uh, northern part of the map. But uh, Fireball, the purple player, is doing uh, a pretty admirable job as well. Admirable. Of holding this, uh, this mountain. So, uh, yeah, it really looked bad for... Uh, it really looked bad for the Eastern team here at the bottom. But uh, after Flash's commander died, and uh, the fact that his team has been sending reinforcements to the front, uh, it's looking much better now. We've got Fidos on the front line, slowly taking out this Gat gun. And uh, yeah, it seems that Fidos outrange the heavy laser tower there, so that is... Uh, 
quite an effective push, and uh, Fireball's got to be careful. He's been very aggressive with his commander here. It was full health, but it is now very low, and uh, he doesn't want to lose his commander there. These Fido's slowly moving forward. And, uh, yeah, the Eastern team really making a comeback here at the bottom. Of course, Flash, after losing his commander, has been set back quite significantly. And, uh, Purple does end up losing his commander. A couple, uh, couple Pyros came up the side here and, uh, took him out. So... Purple was really the only Bastion here on the eastern side holding the mid. And now that he's gone, the western team might just sweep through this whole northern area. And just take this. So uh, once again, the eastern team in trouble. They're going to have to defend this aggression from the west. And uh, how are they going to do it? Let's go ahead and look at the players' bases, see if anything's going on here. Flow building a fusion. Okay, here we go. Oh no, this was this was Yep. Sorry, the colors. So Flow has already built a fusion. He's building an anti-nuke. Uh Adolf building fusion building a second fusion so the players in the back going pretty heavy on eco no surprise on DSD eco is very uh, very effective and uh, here we go this is what I was looking for master Bell going for that nuke play Nukes, of course, a staple of DSD, and if he can get a nuke up, he could uh, potentially catch somebody off guard, take out a player's base. You know, it's always uh, it's always really funny to uh, to see how nukes or see what they can do. Uh, the only player that I see that has an anti nuke right now is uh, Flo. I don't see any other anti nukes. So as long as he's a, as long as uh okay. Uh yep. I think this is yep. Yeah. Yep building an anti nuke too. So both of those players have built anti nukes, but there's no anti nuke in the top right. Thuds now moving through the top of the map. And, uh, oh my god, Orange, Orange D-gunning for his life. I cannot believe he survived there. He's at 1% and he does die. So, that was hilarious. Orange had built a, uh, a K-Bot lab here and was sending thuds down. And then he got flanked uh, by these Panthers, which killed his commander. So... The Eastern team was doing a good job pushing up the North, but uh, once again, I mean the uh, the Western team was doing a good job, but once again they have been uh, they've been stopped, and uh, the game will kind of return to a uh, more of a parody. The eco uh, on both sides it's hard to tell because it's fluctuating so much. But it does feel like the Eastern team has better uh, eco. They have a better uh, economic advantage. They've got more fusions and, and mohos and all of that good stuff. Now the first nuke is about 75, or uh, I guess it's about 66% of the way. And uh, once that nuke is complete, assuming they choose a good target that doesn't have an anti-nuke, um, which means they can't... So Yep's base is defended. And uh, Flo's base, I believe, is defended. Yep. 
Uh, as long as they don't nuke either of those bases, it should be uh, an effective nuke. So it will depend on their scouting. Yeah. The nuke is ready. And will he fire it? I don't know if he's selected a target yet. Here in the middle, it's been very back and forth. Both teams uh, using our, you know, using their kind of artillery units. Teal using pyros, but the uh, eastern team using phytos. And we're still waiting for this nuke to go, to fire. Has it fired? It says the nuke is... Yeah, okay, so we missed the nuke firing, but it must have... Uh, it looks like it, it hit an anti-nuke, so whatever target he chose... So either flow or yep had an anti-nuke and uh, yeah so that was kind of a waste of a nuke and in the meantime the Eastern team doing a good job of uh, bringing some forces around here a couple Panthers got into PTAC's base and uh, there's just not much defense here of course these Panthers are really low and there is a Dragon's Claw so that, that will be enough to stop them but now another round of pyros coming in. And uh, it doesn't feel like the north team has much defense. Here at the bottom, there's a lot of Mortys. And uh, a penetrator in the back. Of course, penetrator great in these kinds of situations on a flat map. With a huge uh, sight range. You can just kind of kill... Uh, kill units and structures with impunity and uh, Adolf moving in here with some pyros and uh, I think it's fair to say that these pyros uh, are going to do some serious damage here well played and uh yeah, the Eastern team is just relentless with their aggression. Um, after Orange died, it feels like uh, the, the Western team's defense fell apart in the North. And uh, the East, has, uh, they've just been sending constant waves of Panthers and uh, Zeus's and Pyro's and all that. There's a Lich here, the Atomic Bomber as well. And uh, I'm assuming it's going to go for this fusion. It does. And there goes that fusion. So uh, the Western team in a lot of trouble. After Orange died, uh, the whole northern, the, the northern uh, side opened up. And the Eastern team has just been pushing relentlessly with uh, all kinds of nastiness. Uh, as Goopy said in chat, there was a nuke, but it hit an anti. I didn't see uh, who he fired at. Uh, it was probably... It was probably Flo. He probably fired at Flo, and it just hit an anti-nuke. No, it, it might have been... Either one of these players would have been good, but... Uh, their scouting wasn't good enough. If they, had, if they had scouted before firing the nuke, I'm sure they would have seen the anti-nuke. Um... But uh, here in the bottom, you know, it continues to be very difficult for either team to make much progress. Both teams uh, slowly pushing forward, but fighting for every inch. And uh, now some Merls being thrown in. There's a Sumo in the front line. So yeah, this is a very even fight in the middle, but in the north, I mean at the in the gulch, but in the north, the eastern team is just absolutely dominating. 
um, sending wave after wave of uh, panthers and Zeuses and pyros. Oh my. And uh, P-Tac has left the game, so P-Tac is out. And now that P-Tac is out, it's uh, it's going to be very difficult for the Western team to uh, to hang on. There is a second nuke uh, ready to fire, but do they have a target? And uh, now here at the bottom, it does seem as though the Eastern team is moving through as well. So the Western team slowly just collapsing on all fronts. They've collapsed in the North and are now collapsing uh, here in the south. Again, there is a nuke Master Bell has uh, ready to fire, but he hasn't picked a target. At this point, I just don't think his team has scouted anything. There's probably not a lot of scouts for the Western team. And uh, if, if I'm honest, it's looking pretty dire. Yeah. It's looking pretty dire for the Western team here. The, uh... Teddy's team is moving through uh, the south of the map. The valley. And they're also moving through the north. And, uh, this nuke is still here. Yeah. No, things things collapsed pretty quickly for the Western team. Uh, it was pretty even for a while, and it seemed like the Western team was ahead, but um, losing losing Flash early on was a huge mistake. And then uh, Orange, I don't remember who the Orange player was, he, uh, he made a really risky play, and then he died, and so once Orange died and Yellow died, the uh, the north collapsed, and then once the north collapsed, um, then the uh, the east team just was sending endless waves of, of raiders. They took out uh, Tacky's base, and uh, now the western team just struggling to defend. Yeah. Struggling to defend on all sides. It's really, uh, at this point, it's pretty over, I think. There's not much left to do. But, uh, yeah, pretty good game. Uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of hilarious things happening, uh, as typically is, uh, very normal for, for DSD. A lot of shenanigans. And uh, at this point, the East team has such an economic advantage that there's just almost no way for uh, for Pink's team to come back. So uh, yeah, GG it was a good game, guys, and. Uh,
Yeah, well played. 